Bailey down in Florida. There were typically about four guys. There they are. Can't you tell who those guys are? <laughs> they were battling for that first base job, and the battle went on and on and on. You can see that a couple of the guys didn't do so well in terms of batting average, though they did slam the home run ball. John Singleton. Brownie, he was the guy going into spring training that kind of had the job. Do a good job, and it's all yours, John. It didn't work out. So one guy that had a great start to spring training, Matt Duffy, hit a uh, hit three rather early home runs, but also played some stellar defense. Can play at first and third. He appears to be on the club. Tyler White slipped in there, a guy who's now had three years in the minor league system, hit 311 over those three years, not hitting a ton of home runs, but he gets on base at over a 400 clip throughout his career, and he did the same this spring. A.J. Reed appears to be maybe the first baseman of the future, but for right now, A.J. Reed goes back to AAA, and Tyler White is that guy that just bangs it around the ballpark. Such an exciting story. Tyler White, a 33rd round draft choice, signed for $1,000 after his senior year. And now his family and friends from North Carolina will be watching him in Yankee Stadium. Uh, it, the report is that his dad used to coach him all over Brownie. And that uh, Tyler White was kind of that guy that was not picked real early by a lot of teams that he played on. But he just kept swinging the bat. And he, uh, it makes me think a little bit of John Crook. You remember that yep, name? Yep. Was he a great first baseman? I don't know. Maybe not one of the best. That's kind of the word on Tyler White. But he can swing the bat. Kevin, back to you guys. He's in the lineup tonight. You know, Mike, we're speculating this might be the lineup you'll see opening day at Yankee Stadium. And I think there's a good chance Marwin Gonzalez will be the first baseman against a right handed Yankees pitcher. Reported that Tanaka will be pitching that opener for the Yankees, right hander. And so Marwin, who has that ability to swing from both sides, had the great spring that you talked about. And he comes off a heck of a year last year with the Houston Astros. He plays a solid defense wherever you put him. Uh, Marwin's a guy that might find himself in this lineup a whole lot on the year. Stay tuned, Kevin. Back to you. Thank you.
heard a lot this spring was the core. The core is coming back of this group. The players kept saying it over and over. Maybe not the core four, uh, the, the infamous core four, but there are a lot of guys on this team that we watched on that playoff team just one season ago. It's something that Houston baseball is starting to build on. We watched a lot of changes happen over the last few years, dating back to 2013. Two of the nine starters coming back back then, Altuve and Jason Castro being the lone guys. Next year, they, they signed Feldman the year before, so he was coming back 3-3, three, three, and here we are, six of nine starters returning in 2016, and it is a lot of the big positions that you look for up the middle. Two guys very comfortable with each other. Of course, Jason Castro behind the plate is going to be good with all these pitchers that are coming back, that chemistry in the bullpen that they worked so hard on building. That's all coming back with maybe just one extra guy. So the new faces feel very comfortable fitting in, including Tyler White, who told me this is the easiest clubhouse to feel like you're a part of the team, guys. at the end of spring training for the Brewers and the Astros glad to have you with us tonight. So tomorrow is the wrap up for the Astros and then they travel to New York head for Yankee Stadium on Saturday have a workout Sunday open the season there for A.J. Hinch on Monday the scene of their three to nothing win in the wild card playoff game last year over the Yankees. Very exciting time for these players and uh, you mentioned earlier Alan Ashby that Mr. Matt Duffy found out before this game today he's going to be making that trip to New York. Of course, we've known all along that Colin McHugh will be the number two starter. So it's his final tune up tonight. Yeah, for Matt Duffy, he's a guy that's been versatile. And I, I think that's really helped him. And number one, he was the MVP in the PCL last year. So he's got uh, quite a track record, performed extremely well early on in the spring, was showing the power bat at third base and first base. It didn't seem to matter defensively. He made all the plays and he made them impressively. So uh, he's a guy that is in a position now to help this club. For the Brewers who are retooling their 13 and 13 with two ties the Astros 17 and 10 with two ties. Here's the lineup for Craig Council who took over their club last year. Domingo Santana the former Astro leads it off in right field. He has sizzled this spring. Scooter Jeanette's the second baseman. Ryan Braun plays left field. The catcher is Jonathan Lucroy. He's the cleanup man. Former Astro Chris Carter bats fifth at first base. Sits Ramon Flores in center field. Aaron Hill at third base. Kirk Neuenheis is the DH. Former Astro Jonathan VR, the shortstop, batting ninth. And of course, Colin McHugh on the mound for the Astros tonight had that great 19 win season last year, part of the duo with Dallas Keuchel that was as big as any duo in baseball for some time now. Has that fastball that he'll, he'll throw quite a bit, cut it often, has the slider curveball, the curveball probably his best strikeout pitch, occasional changeup, and his fastball typically rides around 90 plus miles an hour. So as Colin takes the mound and uh, we look at the Astros rotation this last time through we saw Dallas Keuchel uh, finish up his work in Florida with an ERA for the spring of zero. And then of course recently A.J. Hinch has announced his three four five starters. Mike Fires will be pitching tomorrow here a 110 start against Matt Garza of Milwaukee. 
He'll be in the number three position. Scott Feldman, number four, and Doug Fister, number five, in the rotation as Lance McCullers opens the season on the disabled list, Ash. Yeah, having McCullers not be a part of the rotation, it's bothersome to me. I know that it happens to all ball clubs. I will be anxiously awaiting his return, which is supposed to come somewhere in about that third week of the month of April. Luis Valbuena, Marwin Gonzalez, and the Astros all set to go. Up the middle, it's Correa and Altuve. Could be the opening day lineup. And McHugh goes to work on Domingo Santana. Missing and there's ball one to Santana. You might have seen that 394 average for him. That includes a homer and five runs batted in. Just terrific spring training numbers for Domingo. This one's in the air and it goes out to Colby Rasmus. Round number one. A little bit like Dallas Keuchel, what Colin McHugh can do without having great overpowering fastball type stuff is get in on the hands of hitters and that's what he did to get Santana. And he's always looking to get better. We talk about that with a lot of players, but you know, it might be something that some pitchers would think about. Well, after winning 11 in 2014 and having a 2.73 ERA and a 19 game winner last year, things are good. Scooter Jeanette at 462 has four homers, seven runs batted in, but Colin has continued to try to work to get better. There's strike one. And there's that leadoff fastball finding the outside edge maybe elevated more than Colin would like on that pitch. Jeanette lets that one go Adrian Johnson who I believe lives in Houston or at least has lived in Houston in the past is the home plate umpire tonight. The Brewers were 68 and 94 last year. Made that big trade with the Astros in July. The Carlos Gomez Mike Fires trade got a load of prospects. There's a late swing there from Jeanette, and it's one and two. Previous pitch a changeup, and I don't know if that set up that 88 right there, but that was blown by. McHugh has done such a fabulous job of reinventing himself after coming to Houston, having been with the Mets and the Rockies before he arrived here. It's two and two and this Houston pitching staff was truly outstanding last season Colin a big part of that with 203 innings pitched. Now they led the league in ERA and the bullpen was dominating and that to me was one of the, the huge keys of course when your starting staff is really good as they were that helps the bullpen immensely. Out into right center and deep for George Springer. Right in front of the bullpen. Two down. And Ryan Braun will be next. Saw the smile on the face right there. Long fly outs in a inner squad, well, not inner squad game, but what in essence is a spring training game. They don't bother you so much. Once the season comes, that smile's not on that face. Braun with a 400 spring average has three runs batted in. He's played only five games, returning from back surgery over the winter, and he's had some back stiffness. This one's in the air also. For Springer in right. Three fly ball outs get it done for Colin McHugh and a scoreless first.
Assembled by A.J. Hinch. Begins with second baseman Jose Altuve. It's George Springer in right field. Carlos Correa at shortstop and left field. The cleanup man, Colby Rasmus. Carlos Gomez plays center with Luis Valbuena at third. Preston Tucker the D.H. Marwin Gonzalez at first and Jason Castro the catcher. Right-hander Jimmy Nelson on the hill for well, these Brewers, one and one on his spring, and had a great ERA. And they did not have a lot of guys that put up good numbers on the spring. 180 was his ERA. 11 and 13 a year ago with a 4.11 ERA. That's not bad when you consider pitching in Miller Park in Milwaukee, a considerable hitter's yard. Nelson's 27, a second-round pick in 2010 from Klamath Falls, Oregon. Jose Altuve. Has two homers, 11 runs batted in with a 292 spring average. He's walked seven times around a bunt and he fouls it for strike one. And I told Jose Ash before the game, for my money and from what I've seen of him, I think he is very much improved in terms of getting his pitch to hit. He's taken a lot of pitches this spring. Yeah, we'll see how that pays off for Jose, a guy who's been known uh, to like to go after the first pitch, and he's had a great deal of success. But I guess as you talk about that one of the issues that the naysayers have had about Jose is that the on base percentage hasn't been great. He has been climbing in recent years. Of course a couple of years ago when he hit 341 that on base percentage was quite good. That's in for strike two. It's interesting to watch players evolve through the years isn't it. It is and it's also interesting to consider what some of that evolution does in terms of how it impacts the game. If you've got your top guy seeing a lot more pitches does that help your club ultimately when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. Struck him out looking with a slider. Now generally you're not going to see Jose Altuve take this pitch that is a pitch he'll ram into right center field time and time again. One of the things that I always consider about OK let's let's work the count let's get a get the starter out of the game is that when you look at Major League Baseball in recent years the bullpens have been dynamic and I'm not sure a lot of times you want to get to that pin. George Springer has been solid this spring there's ball one two ninety five two homers five runs batted in diving catches in right field this club Ash has really played hard this spring. They've had a good spring. Don't know what springs mean when you look around. Uh, you can name some teams that are expected to do well this year that did have good springs and then you can find the reverse story as well. But I, I think any club any manager would tell you you'd rather have a good spring in terms of wins and losses than the other way. And A.J. Hinch like just about every manager wants his team to show this week these final few games that things have come together. I will say this if you take what the spring training records might mean right now and project them and say OK this is what it's going to is going to happen during the course of the year the American League would send the Toronto Blue Jays to the World Series against the <laughs> National League's Washington Nationals both those teams had tremendous springs. Well both are pretty highly regarded in the preseason picks. Springer has been dropping down on that right knee as he swung the bat this spring. He gets a full cut and it's two and two. Go back just a couple two three days when George Springer hit two home runs in the ball game had three hits in that one. And I'll tell you what that long ball bat from George Springer this year could do a lot for this club. That slider just kind of spins up there and uh, Nelson got a call Springer smiles it's strikeout number two looking. Uh, I, George apparently didn't feel this this pitch got the plate but from that angle I'd have to say if I'm on the hill I want it. Well you talked about Nelson with that low ERA this spring and he certainly is one of the guys being relied upon by Craig Council for Milwaukee this year after going 11 and 13 a year ago. Carlos Correa's hit 400 with four bombs he's driven in nine this spring he's walked nine times. 
That's a tough pitch. Strike one. Good one to take. Spotting it around well and good velocity at 94. How about that for a spring for Correa? That will do in a pinch. And that home run power coming toward the second half of the spring. One ball, one strike. Do you find when you were a player, did you find that your bat speed did pick up a little bit as the end of the spring approached as you realized, hey, I need to really be swinging the bat the way I want to on opening day? My honest answer is it varied. You'd have some springs, or I did, where you hit well early and some the other way, and so you just never know. Both pitchers breeze through the first, no score after one. And the Astros home opening series is April 11th through the 14th against the Kansas City Royals. Get your tickets by visiting Astros.com or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Colin McHugh getting back to work, who was working on several things this spring, including the changeup, trying to not to rely so heavily on his cutter. I felt like he was getting really predictable last year, so that's something he was working on. But as far as expectations for this year, he's coming off that 19-win season, and he, he said right off the bat, I have the team to thank for that. When you go back and look at the numbers, they helped me out a lot, and that was kind of the story of this team and how they got to the postseason, which was their goal. But expectations for this year wants to get to that two 200 inning mark and I know a lot of pitchers do so we hope to see good things from Colin McHugh Brownie. Well the numbers would support Colin in the sense that he had the fourth best run support in the American League 5.79 per nine innings. His ERA was 3.89 certainly better than average. The year before it was 2.73 so easy to understand why Colin felt that he was in the right spot in that rotation ash. What's that line we hear so often from pitchers. I just want to give my team a chance to win. And Colin did that consistently. Jonathan Lucroy has been the subject of a lot of trade rumors this spring. And he's an affordable player. A catcher. Who's a good defensive player and he hits there's ball one. He's had a fine spring at 341 with two homers seven runs batted in but so far. Nobody has bit on whatever Milwaukee's demand is to trade Jonathan Lucroy. The rumors were the Texas Rangers talked about dealing for him. Rangers actually pulled off a deal for Hornaday of uh, Detroit, or Holiday rather, of Detroit a couple of days ago. So they got their back up. But you know, this guy would really light it up for a lot of teams in contention, but presumably the price is very, very high for him. You know, you mentioned Holiday, a, a guy who goes over to the Rangers. He could start in my book for some clubs. And I, I wonder how the Detroit Tigers felt about even giving him up because there were times when he looked like he was beaten down the door to play every day. The Astros picked up Eric Kratz to be their backup catcher in a trade with San Diego. A liner to left for a hit. And that's a leadoff single for Lucroy. Previous fastball in that sequence there to Lou Croy from Colin McHugh. He was trying to find the outside corner and it just ran right back through the heart of the plate. Something I'm, I'm sure that Colin's aware of. Former Astro Chris Carter had 24 homers last year. And boy, what he did in the last two weeks was important. This spring, 196, four homers, 10 runs batted in. Chris hit 199 for Houston last year. And he really struggled almost all year, but the last 12 games, he hit 353, six homers, 10 runs batted in. 
to help get the Astros into the playoffs. Now smacks one to right. Springer lost it in the lights. Picks it up on the bounce and it'll be runners at first and second with nobody out. New lights in this ballpark too and it makes you wonder when you see one of those plays happen early on in a game like this might we see more of this this year. Yeah, George just flat lost that on what otherwise would have been a very routine play for Springer. Well, that's his first play back in the stadium with LED lights now. And a chance for him to get used to what that will bring for the home opener against Kansas City. Ramon Flores the center fielder is the batter. They are brighter lights they are more energy efficient as well There's strike one. Sometimes all it takes is a little tweaking angling some of those that might be in the eyes of corner outfielders right away. Flores was a Yankee last year for 32 at bats. That's a good looking change up Ash. Seen it already a couple of times now from Colin and we mentioned last year the percentage was way down in terms of that change up for McHugh but if he can spot it like that there are still plenty of good days to come for Colin McHugh. Curve bounces. Good play by Castro. One and two. Jason was working with some a backup pair of shin guards before the game today. Of course, you know all about that. Catcher's equipment. You have to have a, a second set of gear ready to go at all times, Ash. It's tough to do, too, because you, you have a tendency to have that gamer set that you use all the time. It's hard to put in the time with the others. Well, you know, you could sense, Ash, as you talk to the players tonight, how happy they are to be back in Houston after the long spring training period in Florida. You know, and I'll say doubly so for the guys who were swinging it well toward the end of the spring. You want to save those hits. You want to get back home and start playing real games and start unloading right away. Two and two now. You'll hear that cry many a time. Save it. And oftentimes by the guy who picks up two or three hits in a game like Carlos Correa who tore it up at the end. Well of course he tore it up all the way through. Off the plate a full count now a big pitch coming for McHugh here in the second inning. Astros open up Monday in New York. They have Tuesday off and then play Wednesday and Thursday there. Then they go to Milwaukee. Grounder goes foul, first base side. So they'll be seeing this club again in another week. And for that reason, A.J. Hinch did not want to give the Brewers a look at a starting pitcher who's going to be facing them in Miller Park. No, you were talking about Colin McHugh and maybe some predictability last year was felt. With the little cutter. That was the little cutter he used right there on the 3 2 count. He feels he can throw that pitch for a strike anytime. Bouncer back to McHugh. He feeds Correa. Comes down on the bag, and then the laser throw over to first makes it a 1 6 3 double play. Now that's not the best of leads there by Colin McHugh, but throwing it over the bag enabled Correa to be able to come back down and make the play. Watch as this throw kind of takes Correa up and off the bag, but he's wise enough to come right back down on it before unloading. Two down, Luke Croy to third base. Aaron Hill's the batter. Veteran infielder playing third. He's hit 188 this spring with two runs batted in. Hill was with the Diamondbacks when he made the move to Milwaukee. And of course with Milwaukee going through this transitional phase. Aaron is one of the uh, grizzled veterans at age 34. A grizzled veteran who back in his time with the Toronto Blue Jays had a 37 homer year as a second baseman. Broken bad hit to left field one to nothing. The barrel of the bat wound up between the mound and third base on the RBI single by Hill his third run batted in. Yeah he's had some nice years he hit 36 homers for Toronto in 09. 
Here's a, yeah, fastball runs in on the hands. Yeah, I said 37, 36 is the right number. But who's going to quibble over one home run after that many? You'd take either one, wouldn't you? <laughs> Any player down there in that dugout would beg for that extra <laughs> dinger. Kirk Neuenheis comes up now. Former New York Met. He was also with the Angels briefly last year, 27 year old outfielder who's DHing, and there's strike one to him. 288, one homer, seven runs batted in for 23 spring games for Neuenheis. The Brewers were considering something like nine players for center field when their camp opened. It's a lot of decision making. <laughs> Here the left field line, Colby Rasmus with the catch. One run, three hits, and a man left. One nothing, Brewers. MLB.TV Premium is back with a new low price for 2016. Watch every out-of-market game for every team live in true HD on over 400 devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for your details. Well, here in downtown Houston, it's a, a teeming downtown Houston this weekend, Ash. My goodness, are the sporting events plentiful in this city this weekend. Yeah, I guess you'd call that pretty tough competition. Maybe maybe a little tougher competition. Well, I don't know for that nine man spot in center field for yeah. the Brewers you were talking about. Yeah, uh, we don't have nine events going on, but there are some good ones, aren't there? Oh, Shell Houston open underway. Final four starting on Saturday, finishing on Monday. Rockets are playing tonight at home. A lot going on. Colby Rasmus in the box. He has three homers, 13 runs batted in, and a 243 average. Bobby Riggs hasn't been seen in town, has <laughs> No. <laughs> Great to have Colby come back after he was extended the qualifying offer and accepted it. He was the first player to do that. There is strike one coming back on a one year deal. There's the way he finished the season in 2015. Mm. What a torrid finish. And he won over a few fans in that period. He's got a few fans in that clubhouse too right yes, now. Yes he does. So he's got a new Auburn football helmet that apparently he's going to join join George Springer who's been seen wearing his Texans helmet in the clubhouse and might be some other guys involved in all that. George had his Texans helmet on when he was doing interviews with the media today. Kept it on during the entire interview. That'll hang out into right center field. And be caught. One out. Can't wait till we see Colby on Saturday, Ash, the travel day to New York. He's supposed to break out that new red velvet suit, correct? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait, Brownie. Okay. Well, you know, it's supposed to be coats and slacks. So on that velvet suit, is it slacks or is it, <laughs> it maybe something that could disqualify itself? Well, yeah, I guess if you're going red velvet, you have to get a suit. It can't be just a coat, right? Yeah. One out, and it's uh, former Brewer Carlos Gomez. Just hit his first homer of the spring a few days ago. Oh. Lashes that one, and it's caught by Hill. A bullet for out number two. That's a good end of the spring at bat right there because you just drilled it. You couldn't care less about getting the hit and wasting them. So you take this. 
And you go back to the bench and the hitting coach comes over and says great swing remember that one. Ooh. Aaron Hill might remember that for a while. Yeah you want to get those tough luck at bats out of the way in spring training. Remove all of that from the from the quiver bag. Now Luis Valbuena. He was saying in the clubhouse I can do better than I did last year. I don't know if he can do better defensively. I thought he, he was quite spectacular. He was good. The shift is on as always for Valbuena. 263 one homer five runs batted in for Luis. Now 30 years old from Venezuela. Off speed pitch and he takes it one and one. I think one thing we've seen from him Ash toward the end of last year and here in spring training some has been the ability to take the ball to left field more. It could help him enormously uh, last year it was about strikeouts and inability to to get on base the way he would like. He bangs out a hit over second base. There's no question marks about his power his ability to hit that home run. And again defensively at third base he was among the best in the league. Pick up a few base hits like this. And turn into that 250 plus type hitter. And you really have something he can still come up with the bat flip that's always a part of the repertoire. Part of his game. First base runner for Houston now it's Preston Tucker. Yes you got to know your own game right. Yep. Tucker with a 300 average this spring including three homers has driven in eight with a 924 OPS. He's gotten rather toasty here right toward the end of the spring. A shift for him as well. Strike we were talking before the game Ash about these left handed hitters and the shifts. This is pretty common in baseball right now. Don't know if it will become a trend or not but it just seems in, in selected spring training games that some of these left handed batters in situations like this are more inclined to bunt now. Shortstop over to first for out number three. VR takes care of it and we move to the third one nothing Milwaukee. Forward to opening day at Yankee Stadium. What a great place for the Astros to begin the campaign in 2016 with the Yankee Doodle Dandy on the mound. Dallas Keuchel in three starts last year against the Yankees shot them out and, and now gets that big assignment again after his Cy Young award. And yes. none bigger brownie than the the big one game play in that the Astros were involved in as a wild card team along with the Yankees. Uh, but Dallas showed no fear whatsoever in front of the 50,000 plus in New York and just shut down the Yankees. I was asking him before the game tonight were you able to get your workouts in this winter with all the awards you received. He said well sometimes I didn't know where they had a workout place but yeah it was OK. But you know in addition to the Cy Young Award he had won that prestigious Warren Spawn Award and it meant a lot to him to receive that award in his home state of Oklahoma and uh, he said his family got to know Warren Spawn's family a little bit and talked about what a great lefty Spawn was 363 wins it really meant a lot to Dallas to get the Spawn Award in addition to the Cy Young 363 wins I can't see that ever being approached again with the changes in the game for sure 
There's ball one to Jonathan Villar, the former Astro at 189 with three runs batted in. It yeah. seems he'll be the shortstop. You know, sometimes you get hit with blessings in life where things happen that you can't explain. But when I first came to the big leagues, came up with the Cleveland Indians, and the pitching coach was Warren Spahn. And it's just a, it's phenomenal when you get to be around guys like that who've had the great success that certainly Warren had. Bouncer right to third. Valbuena juggles it and gets. It. I don't know if it was my imagination, but Valbuena acted like there could have been lights involved. Now we've seen Springer shy away. I don't know if that's the case here, but certainly, well, it was a odd bounce. He's uh -huh. apparently telling Colin McHugh. Yeah. So don't throw that pitch again because I don't want that odd bounce. That's a point you're making about these lights though and as we look up at the light tower above left field it's a different pattern Santana sends Gomez way back. It almost looks as if only about half the lights are turned on but they're brighter now I'm not sure if that's going to be the pattern but looking at that big light stanchion above the left field wall. Uh, not all the lights appear to be on. Well, they're redirected, aren't they're they? They're redirected. I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. I think they've got them angled so much, and they may have to do a little more angulating as the days go by here, and maybe talk to some of the, the players on the field. Yeah, there may be some issues that, and that's why this is a good idea to be in this ballpark now, and let these players take a look at how things are. Scooter Jeanette hit a fly ball to right. It's not quite the same scenario where the. Houston Colt 45s or the Astros at the time faced when they hit the Astrodome when the Yankees had come to town. Uh, they couldn't find the baseball up no. in that ceiling could they. No they could not. And they had to paint the uh, panels of the roof. Which led to no sunlight on the grass and the grass died and thereby AstroTurf was invented. That's a good case of chicken salad being made huh. Larry Durker told a great story about playing an exhibition game before the Astrodome opened and uh, nobody could see the ball and he kept getting fly balls and they kept landing <laughs> uncaught and he said so here I was a minor <laughs> leaguer trying to make the club and I thought I'm going to get sent down because big <laughs> leaguers can't catch pop ups. <laughs> yeah that's great stuff. I played a game many a moon ago back in Toronto and the, the fog rolled in and came right down at the end of the game. Ironically Yankees in town fly ball routine fly ball to center field wound up ending that affair. It dropped and turned into a grand uh, slam. Oh no. Oh no. A.J. Reed hit a ball. What was it about a week ago at, at St. Lucie against the Mets. And uh, Joanna Cespedes was playing center field. He hit the ball over Cespedes' head. It wound up at the base of the center field wall. Cespedes put his arms out as if wanting the umpire to call ground rule double ball wedged in padding. It wasn't wedged. So AJ then came from second base on in, and it was an inside the park homer. Jeanette strikes out looking. We go to the last of the third on nothing Brewers.
has pitched his first three for the Astros and probably will go about 100 pitches or so. It sometimes varies depending upon what's been happening prior to a given start for a pitcher. But Mike Fires will go tomorrow. He thought he might go about that many pitches, 90 or so. Final tune up before the regular season starts. AJ huh. talking with Colin right now. With Dallas Keuchel going seven innings in that most recent start. I would say he's primed to have a shot to go all the way in his opener. Well, he could the way he pitches. Marwin Gonzalez 333 four homers eight runs batted in has had just a terrific spring. He gives A.J. Hinch that veteran bat and even though he can play anywhere he might be the opening day first baseman. Against Masahiro Tanaka. Up to bunt he takes and it is ball one on appeal they checked with the third base umpire but he did not offer at it in the umpire's opinion. Almost as so many of the left hand hitters who come to the plate now in the big leagues see the shift that one guy remaining on the left side who shallows up and kind of cuts down the angle a bit. He hits one high to right field. Santana on the track. Oh, no. You know but I was going to say about Marwin. He's a guy that it kind of surprised me surprises me to see the shift because at least a, a year or two ago I would have said Marwin is more of that guy who sprays it around. Yeah I think he's really gained a more powerful swing as yes. the ball's been jumping off his bat in spring training. He's got a powerful looking stroke from the right side from the left it's more that quick approach with the bat. Now the shift is on for Jason Castro. He's worked hard all winter on retooling his swing. Rips a liner into center field. Hit number two for Houston. Well, if that's the tool he's left with right now, <laughs> take it all year long. Yeah. Yeah, it would appear that he's feeling it for the moment. Just go ahead and hammer that first thing where you like it. Remember that swing from a couple of years ago? Yes. He hit a lot of balls to that part of the park and a left center ash. Well he's got that natural power to left field and this is a perfect yard for it. Altuve has the hole on the right side of the infield. And there's strike one. I think he's maybe matched his strikes taken approach for a couple of seasons ago when he yeah. hit 341. You're right. He's looked at a lot of pitches this spring compared to his normal allotment. One and one. Is it voice spring training? <laughs> yeah, it's voice spring training. Yes, it is. <laughs> you got to build that bad boy up, don't you? Yeah, it's spring training for everybody, right? Umpires. Absolutely. You know what? We wanted to check on that uh, iPad that the managers have, by the way. That's one different twist from last year. In the dugouts this year, all major league managers are being furnished with iPads with special scouting information on them. Since 2013, Altuve is the top of the heap in hits. Pretty good list of names right there, too. Yeah, I wonder when it's all said and done if Jose Altuve winds up upping the walks column, but the hips hits drop off to 170, say. Does that leave you with the player that you most desire? Well, the way he can steal bases. Yeah, that's a great point. It might work. By the and way, look at this field right now, and I don't know if on the TV set we can see it, but the field looks like midday light down on the, the grass yes. to my eye. Yes. Very bright lights. And again, it, it looks different on at least the set I'm looking at. But to the eye here at the ballpark, that is a bright playing field. You need to tweak your resolution there. I, for my own eyes, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I've been looking for the button. I can't find it. <laughs> Rudder going, swing and a miss. The throw bouncing on into center field. A strikeout of Altuve is out number two. Castro gets a stolen base.
Third you know, strikeout for Nelson. You know what winds up happening with players? Spring training is a time you work on something. Everybody's been talking about this item or that, and you work on it. And then I think of Altuve here. A couple of strikeouts to start the game. I'm never surprised when a guy goes back to what he does come opening day. Yep. Yeah, no matter how diligent the spring training work is, when yep. the game's count, it can be different. You rely on what got you here. Springer struck out looking. Can George Springer play 150 games this year? It's one of the keys for this club, I think. Ball one in tight. You've got a couple of guys in terms of pure talent who could be in the MVP consideration come the end of the season. George Springer is one of them for me. And the more games he plays says likely he's performing at or close to his ability and boy that could be sky high for George. What? Takes the breaking pitch one and one. Yeah. Some people feel that George can be an MVP. Some people feel that Carlos Correa can win that award and they're out there in print now predicting it Ash this time of year. Doesn't surprise me at all. And if you've been around the game and you come and look at the pure level of talent down on the field whether it be in games or even just workouts you can see it it's it's available. Nelson snags it. Tosses him out. No runs a hit and a man left after three one nothing Milwaukee. of the fourth Astros mini plans are on sale now pick games and great seat locations with a 15 game flex plan or choose the best giveaways with the 10 game award series package visit Astros.com slash mini plans or call 1-877-9 Astros to get yours today a couple of exhibition games are still a part of spring training but for the most part it is behind them AJ very happy with the way his guys work this spring. He was very interested to see how serious they would be. I wanted to see these guys focus on the field, prepare to get better. He said there's actually a ton of areas we can get better in. All these media outlets saying that we're a good team. We're expected to go deep in the playoffs. When you look at it, when you look at inside of what we're trying to do here, there are a lot of areas we need to push ourselves at. One of them playing elite defense, especially with the style of the guys they have on this pitching staff. And then base running guys is something they really worked on this spring. They want to be more aggressive and he said that's going to come with outs and that's okay. Uh, they don't want to play with fear and that's the mindset that they established. So attention to detail got better and better as spring went on. So very good report from the manager talking about spring training and guys like Altuve, Correa really stepping up and becoming leaders. Very good stuff to hear, guys. Julia, does it seem to you that with the new LED lighting, it's brighter in here? I'm getting a tan over here mm. with this lighting. It's yeah. extremely bright. I it will say bright. that very, very different than it has been in the past. Quite different. You know, I'll, I'll give you a, a little bit of my impression. The outfield is the brightest part of the field from what I'm seeing. Strike one to Ryan Braun. You it does about, look different. You it? talked about some of the lights being angled and it, it feels like they've got a, a load of the lights set toward the outfield side of things. The outfield does look a little brighter than the infield. You're right. Bounce foul. 0 and 2. You know, Julia was talking about the defense and how important it is to play top level defense. This outfield has a chance to be the best in the business. And I thought they were close to it last year, if not there already. And 
I thought the way this club played defense was probably the biggest factor in the pitchers having the success they had. That lady's wearing sunglasses for a night game. Rasmus back to the wall and left. That one's going to reach the seats. Ryan Braun takes the home run trot and it's 2 nothing Milwaukee on his first of the spring. And I think what you'll see on this pitch is Colin McHugh came with that slow curveball of his. Ryan Braun is one of the game's really good breaking ball hitters. Just stayed back and unloaded at the last instant. It winds up always looking like a hanger when a guy hits a breaking ball. Watch this. Look at that location. But it's because he waits back so well that it winds up looking so easy. It's only his 11th at bat of the spring. He looks ready to go. If he can wait back on a curveball like that, Ash. Surprising to see Brett Phillips laughing in the dugout, huh? Former Astro <laughs> farmhand. Jonathan <laughs> Lucroy with ball one. What a great piece of video footage of Brett Phillips this spring laughing. <laughs> it was an infectious, to say the least, laugh and had his teammates just dying over it. He was one of the big uh, prospects traded in that package. Gomez and fires. That's a ground ball hit through the left side by Lucroy. And Phillips had been sidelined by an injury this spring. Recently has returned to play. Might get in later on, but he's certainly a big part of the Milwaukee future after that trade. Yeah, Chris Carter's a batter. Carter was non-tendered by the Astros and signed as a free agent with Milwaukee. Sometimes that message at the mound from the catcher to the pitcher is simply hey th there's nothing you can do about it. Those pitches were not bad pitches. In fact we'd love to see that time and time again. Ball one to Carter. He hit that ball up in the lights that fell in for a single in front of George Springer. 90 homers with the Astros in those three seasons. In tight and it's two balls no strikes to Carter. Well Milwaukee playing in the NL Central has to deal with the likes of the Cubs. Cardinals. Mm. The Reds the Pirates. The Cubs are being picked by some to win the World Series for the first time in a hundred years or so. More than 100, actually. 3 and 0. Oh. They didn't dazzle with their spring, 10 and 17 to this point. But as we said up top, you really can't tell what, you, what you've gotten from a box of spring chocolates. <laughs> Carter takes, and it's a walk. Two men on for Ramon Flores now. Let's see how it went last year. The Cardinals won 100, the Pirates 98, the Cubs 97. Then the Brewers and Reds filled out that fivesome. That's some serious stopping going on in the top three spots. Man. Do you like the Cubs to win that division? I don't know. I haven't seen enough of them on paper. They sure look good. Oh, they do. Is Jake Arrieta still that Cy Young Award winning pitcher? And I think, you know, those questions. Apply to both of the Cy Young Award winners yep. from last year, and that's natural. Yeah, I think they. It's always that way until a guy establishes himself with two or three of those awards. Right. And then you feel like you you really know what you've got. Exactly. There's a lot of excitement in Chicago, though. Thinking back to kind of the parallel path the Cubs and Astros have been on, though, and it's been, I think, a lot of fun for baseball fans to follow their progress the last three years. You can bet they're going to be packing in Wrigley. Many feel that the Cardinals are not the same team. They're not going to be anywhere near that good. We'll see. Both the fastball and changeup just gliding away on Colin McHugh to his arm side and I'm sure 
Jason Castro wants to get him back staying behind the baseball. If you start spinning out with the left side, the baseball will just run away to your arm side. Make you scratch your head. It's got to be nice for these guys to be able to settle into their own homes, if only for a night or two. Bouncer first. Marwin going to second. Good throw there. Correa back to McHugh. Safe at first. Well, they almost got it done with two long throws. You know, this is a good place to point out what Marwin Gonzalez brings at first base. Not only the bat to the lineup, but he's a pure infielder and he kind of brings that infield instinct down to first base. He'll give you the shot at the double play on a ball you don't even anticipate it with. Watch him back up and still provide zip. He's got a great arm. And then of course Carlos Correa can bring it from short. That's about as close as you can make it on that type of a ground ball. Sure is. Now A.J. Hinch has come out. Runners at first and third now with one out. He talks with the home plate umpire Adrian Johnson. Hmm. What is this about do you know. You know I'm asking myself is. Replay even a consideration in a in a game like this. That's the only thought I had. Of course down in Florida spring training or in Arizona for that matter. You don't have that option. So this becomes a whole new ball game right here. Right. Uh, OK. We've got that new. Interpretation down at second base this year as guys slide into the bag what they are required to do. And if they don't slide right into the bag you can and should call the double play if you're the umpires watch the slide. He goes mm -hmm. after Carlos Correa and by the new rule book that's a double play. Interesting point Aaron Hill was strike one. The base runner is required to be able to touch the bag at the end of a slide. But he also had A.J. Hinch talking about this one day. That base runner, if he starts at the bag, cannot flare off to one side or the other. Right. He's got to continue on the path he starts on. It's a tough rule. One and one. Yeah, it's a whole different set of rules now regarding that double play pivot to try to protect the middle infielders. From aggressive base runners I'm after the Chase Utley slide. I'm actually surprised we didn't see that call here as kind of the, hey, we're going to do it right now early to set the tone kind of call. That's a swing and it's one and two. Well, based on the replay we saw, that's a pretty good test. Here's the Utley slide that prompted this rule change. Yeah, Chase Utley goes into the bag the way guys have gone for a long time. Had that slide. Then completed clearly Utley would have gone way past the bag and he does even with this right but that's not allowed anymore. The result there is a double play. But. The result on a lot of plays wow. Mm. A lot of plays that don't look anywhere near that flagrant I think we're going to see with some double plays called this year. Mm. Aaron Hill very fortunate. Oh yeah that was up around the nose. Watch this go right by the face. Wow. And again that fastball running away on Colin McHugh. He's not staying behind it the way he typically would. Colin's been excellent at making in game adjustments. Gomez backing the runner tagging at third. There's the catch for the second out. Throw into second base. Sack fly three to nothing on the hill. Fly ball. Let's go back to 1977 and Hal McRae. Hal McRae, a great player. Of course, you see George Brett hitting the ground ball to start this, but McRae going into the bag, and he was known for taking guys apart. I don't think he could have reached back and touched that bag, just my interpretation <laughs> of the play. But yeah, you you can't do that. And and there were rules in place even then that said you've got to be able to reach and grab the bag. Look at Hal McRae. That's just off the charts. And of course that's one of the plays cited in terms of this new change now and I, I think it's a good thing but it's going to be tough to police I think. 
Foul ball strike one on Neuenhuis. Boy, Willie Randolph got body blocked into left field on that McRae slide. And of course, Tejada from the Utley slide we saw before had a broken leg. Now you think about the some of the top talents playing middle infield positions and the investments the clubs have in them and the investments in terms of their future and how much money they might make that could be a game changer with that rule now uh, allowing players to stay healthier we'll wait and see how it works out but I'll tell you what it's going to come into play sometimes where I think it's going to leave the players broadcasters fans wondering why was it called this time when it wasn't called that time yes. Late swing by new and ice one and two and the rule states that the base runner must be sliding before he gets to the bag. And uh, so Hal McCray would have been out on that one. Yeah we were talking with A.J. Hinch during spring training about this new rule. And so he went and started to field around with the umpires and he got uh, a variety of responses. Rasmus backing in left. Well we'll get more of an explanation as we come back. Two runs scoring on two hits with a man left for Milwaukee and a three nothing Brewer lead. of the umpiring crew out around second base possibly to discuss and we're presuming that is the case that situation of calling a double play based on a slide that's now illegal. Well, I think that's extremely wise by AJ and and you, you can see what kind of a guy what kind of a manager he is. He wants to know the details and I imagine he went out and said hey what were you guys told this is what I was told. And how are we going to proceed with this once day one comes right. There was no argumentative tone just uh, questions and informative session it appeared. Yep. Yeah but I, I honestly I think the umpires are all asking themselves personally how do I call this the first time I see this in the regular season. Sure. And the uh, young umpire and uh, Carlos Torres Corey Blazer are the younger umpires along with the veterans. Adrian Johnson and Eric Cooper on this four man crew talk it over. Now Carlos Correa he granted a third earlier. That's strike one. Well you know we talked about it being spring training for everybody right. But the way rules and especially rule changes in this case are interpreted. Yep. This is a critical time to figure out how this is going to fly come opening day. Broken bat fly ball Santana. One down. Yeah, as as we were looking at Carlos Correa at the plate I, I wonder even though he wasn't involved in, in a big play last year with this. Did his sheer talent as a youngster come into the consideration about what you don't want to see happen again at second base on those plays. Yeah. Think about the outstanding crop of young shortstops in the big leagues right now. And the combined value of these guys for the next 10 years. It's just huge. Rasmus the batter now. There's ball one. So you have Corey Seeger with the Dodgers. People are predicting a rookie of the year for him this year. 
Francisco Lindor with Cleveland Xander Bogarts with Boston Jose Iglesias Detroit and so on down the line. And there is some top flight talent at the shortstop position. I didn't get to see a whole lot of Lindor last year although numbers say he had a great year. But Xander Bogarts with the Boston Red Sox. Jeff Lum and I who were in Boston last year we were kind of blown away by the talent of this guy not only defensively but in particular offensively. Yes. Drove in I think 81 runs. It's lashed on a line but the shift. Winds up without number two for the Brewers Jeanette there to catch it. Some tough luck Gomez lined out earlier and now Rasmus hits one on the button. Gomez is in for a very important year in his career. He could be a free agent at the end of this year. Well, I hope he has the kind of year that leaves him and his agent considering free agency. And by that, I mean if he has one of those big seasons that can help this club, that's your best place to be able to be a free agent. Last year, an off year for him. He had some injuries, 255 average, 12 homers, 56 runs batted in. In 2013, he hit 24 homers, stole 40 bases. The next year, 23 homers, 34 steals. High to center field. Floor is waiting. A 1 2 3 fourth keeps Nelson in the lead, 3 to nothing. Made Park 3 0 Brewers leading the Astros. And in just a couple of days, this team will be on a plane to New York, breaking for the season. Two guys who made an impact on this team last year who aren't ready to go just yet. Lance McCullers, starting pitcher, and of course, Evan Gaddis, who's recovering from hernia surgery over this offseason. Just weeks before spring traded or spring training started both are progressing very nicely though Evan Gaddis had eight at bats today in a minor league game back in Kissimmee I would expect him to have a rehab assignment once the minor league season gets going Lance McCullers also shoulder soreness during the spring training so he was a little bit behind as far as his throwing program and getting ready to go but good things today for him live batting practice back in Kissimmee 30 to 35 pitches using all of his pitches Hinch very encouraged with what he's hearing there so Lance McCullers not far behind. These guys will rejoin this team soon, guys. Did you get the big scoop on uh, Evan Gaddis shaving his beard? He sure. did what? Yeah, he shaved his beard. No, he didn't. Yep. So I haven't seen any pictures of since we left. Well, there was a picture on Twitter. This is breaking news. Uh, supposedly, he still has a mustache, but we can't call him the caveman anymore, no, can we? No. Oh, I think he still qualifies. <laughs> okay. Some guys can can <laughs> shave it down, and they still qualify. He's there. <laughs> Jonathan VR gets it going. He grounded out earlier. That's a strike. So obviously with those two critical injuries Julia talked about with Gaddis and McCullers opening on the disabled list that has given two other players a chance to make this club. And one more decision to be made on that final pitcher Two hopper to second Altuve takes care of out number one because the Astros have decided with the decision to have Matt Duffy on the club to go with 12 pitchers to open the season rather than 13. 
So it comes down to a choice and uh, I believe Wandy Rodriguez might be pitching in relief tonight. And that could help that decision along. Santana the batter he's 0 for 2. That strike one James Hoyt has been in the mix. And. The Astros have another possibility as well Michael Feliz even though Michael Feliz has been optioned to the minor leagues he could be brought back for opening day. One and one there are some options in that regard as far as Wandy is concerned. If he were on the club that would give A.J. Hinch a second lefty reliever behind Tony Sip. And a long man. So those are two prominent thoughts when it comes to the construction of this pitching staff. Day game tomorrow a 110 start and then those decisions will be made probably by the end of that day. It's two and two it's really unusual for the Astros to open with a week long road trip. And it's going to be chilly in New York from all forecasts we're hearing just the way we like it. You bet. Oh, Ooh, another man. up and in. Yeah, that arm side action. Yep. For Colin, as you pointed out, Ash, is something he's trying to work on to avoid all those inside pitches. It's not brand new for Colin. A couple of years ago, it happened quite a bit of the time, and he was pitching successfully. But it does happen, and, and that's one of the reasons why that little cutter that he gets moving the other direction can really help him out. Yes. Altuve with a pop up. Two outs. Do you find when you're catching a pitcher who's had that problem and is experiencing further problems in a game, it helps for him to make the adjustment by throwing the cutter? Does that help him to finish the pitch a little bit better so he doesn't fly open? I think you caught in a previous lifetime, didn't you? No. Maybe a pitching coach? No. I, I, absolutely. You, you have to finish that cutter to make it work right. And the only thing is sometimes you by getting around the baseball as you do on a cutter or slider it can leave you with the same basic problem but uh, the fact that you do have to get out in front to finish it can really help you. Ball one to Jeanette who's 0 for 2. And Colin knows what's going on and he knows it's happened many times. It's like a hitter trying to come out of a slump you're trying to figure out what is it I need to do to get this turn back around. Mm -hmm. You cut that one one and one. But isn't this one of the most difficult things in sports to think about a mechanical adjustment while competing. Yep. I. You know all the years of playing this game as a hitter. It goes on constantly. You are constantly making adjustments trying to do things right and I'm sure the same is true for a pitcher. I think of golf a lot of times and if you get more than one notion in your mind you might as well forget it. You're just going to spin yourself into the ground. And that's why you see a lot of us corkscrewed on various fairways around <laughs> Houston. One and two. Yep. But the guys, you know, competing in the Shell Houston Open, you know, they get their game going and they're not thinking, right? It's just, and, and that's the case with baseball too or other sports. It becomes more of a natural flow because you're not slowing yourself down to think, well, I'm making this mistake. I've got to make this adjustment. I've never run into a guy in, in this game. As a hitter who when he got red hot said you know what I'm thinking about this they <laughs> yeah. all say I'm just seeing it well yeah it's just happening and I think the same is true in golf or any other sport right two and two now for instance when you're bowling ash you don't think about moving <laughs> your your thumb just uh, 10 degrees to the left do you when I'm bowling I haven't done enough thought process <laughs> when I left the house to realize where I was actually going. <laughs> Three and two. Very bad example. <laughs> 70 pitches so far for McHugh in the game as you see on the top of the screen. And the way he's laboring I'm not sure how much longer he would be allowed to stay in this game. Out to right center the shift was on it's a long run for Springer well he covers right and center and it's out number three. <laughs> Going to have the right fielder laying out on Towles Hill. 
And the box score will say Springer right field slash center field as he tracks this one down. <laughs> As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Houston Astros 28 game ticket plans are on sale right now. Choose a series or weekend plan for the 2016 season. For more information visit Astros.com or you can call 1-877-9-ASTROS. That's the old fashioned way. Oh, that's a workable plan for a lot of people who are working. They can't go to as many games as they would like but 28 games that should be doable. Here at Minute Maid Park, it's 3 0 Brewers, and Jimmy Nelson has had the Astros number so far. Infield overshifted for Luis Valbuena, who banged a single to center field earlier. Nelson has mixed in some curveball sliders with his fastball, a few change ups maybe. That's ball one. Brownie, you came so close to having the Astros right fielder George Springer <laughs> laid out on Towels Hill making the play. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Oh, talk about a storyline. That would be historic. I really like the way Lucroy sets up Ash. Well you like just a part of his game. Well you're He's right. He's got a couple of hits tonight. He just looks as quiet as can be at the plate. I watched him throw before the game and looks like a quality catcher. Quiet behind the plate too. Yep. Yeah, some guys will talk about I like to see a, a big catcher. But then when they play with that guy that is kind of the small catcher and sets the little small zone they feel like well maybe it's actually a small catcher I like but it's a nice look that he provides. In for a strike three and one David Stearns is the 30 year old general manager he came from the Houston front office. Youngest GM there is Tyler White as Stearns prepares for his first season as the Brewers GM. So Evan Gaddis has no beard but Tyler White is loaded. Huh? <laughs> Still plenty of time for Evan to grow one though before he gets here. <laughs> yeah. Takes him about two <laughs> days right. <laughs> Three and two. It's just such a great time of year for stories like the Tyler White story. His parents were <laughs> at Disney when the Astros were playing the Braves. Where dreams come true and his dream came true that day. Just a great, great story. Check swing ball four. Valbuena takes a lead off walk. When you wish upon a star, was that his walk up music? It should be. <laughs> now Preston Tucker, who grounded out. Can you imagine though, after his beginnings in Pro Ball, 33rd round pick, went to a small college. And he's just worked his way up just just through sheer hard work and good hitting. And now he's going to get an opening day in Yankee Stadium. Mm -hmm. His first day in the big leagues. Well it's a great story and 
it becomes a an even better story if he's able to produce when he gets out there and plays. His track record says that's a pretty good chance. Tucker certainly produced as a rookie last year with a couple of pinch hit homers. Some big hits for the Astros. There's strike one. You and Ash and Julia, of course, did that tremendous comeback in Anaheim mm. when Tucker got it started with a home run. It felt, uh, yeah, it's a nice thing, a home run right there down at that stage of the ball game, but you had no sense what it was going to lead to with two outs. And he had an 0-2 count, he said. Two outs, ninth inning closer for the Angels on the hill. 3-0 lead for Houston Street, and the Astros come back and score five. George Springer had a big triple in that inning. Until the home run hit, though, as a pinch hitter by Jed Lowry, it all was just kind of yeah. nicety stuff. What a fabulous comeback in a big game on the road where the Astros had major problems winning last year. Two and two. What do you suppose the odds would be that a major league club down three nothing, 0 2 count on the leadoff man in the ninth inning would come back and win? Less than 1%, right? Oh, easily. I mean, if they were 1%, that would say that once, maybe twice a year, you might be able to pull. Well, of course, you're not going to lose 162. So let's, right. let's say once a year, it would be kind of the, the norm. Yeah. So it's going to be way below that in, in my estimation. How many major league games do you think? went that way last year maybe a couple two outs ninth inning nobody on base down three and two strikes on the hitter closer mm -hmm. on the hill for the opposition club I don't know did it did it even happen for it, anybody else it may not have happened again that was a 16 game improvement for the Astros over 2014 a little Force play at second base, and VR took it over to Aaron Hill in the shift. I thought Aaron Hill had a chance to complete this double play, but veteran second sacker knows a lot better than I do sitting right here. Well, that's true. He's playing third tonight, but he's played a lot of second. Yeah. He knows how to turn that double play. Now, Marwin Gonzalez. Marwin you know the way he's hit and you talked about it earlier is just making himself more and more of a weapon and, and somebody who almost demands more playing time he hit 279 last year 344 at bats had a 442 slugging percentage and then there's his defensive value and yet look at the infielders on this club something about becoming one of the game's very best utility players takes you off that list you start becoming an everyday player. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't imagine Carlos Correa would be penciled in for many days off if he's healthy this year. Same for Jose Altuve. Valbuena will get some. There's an opportunity at first base now. Not much going on in the outfield with those three guys. I wonder what the intent is for number of starts for the two you mentioned Altuve and Correa. Yeah. 155, 160. It, who knows? It could be. Strike one to Gonzalez. Generally speaking, managers like to play the guys like Marwin Gonzalez early in the season. They want to get them a couple of starts those first couple of weeks. They don't want them rotting on the bench after getting all the spring training at bats and being used to playing quite often. Popped up, and yet the, the guys you're talking about don't want to take a day off early nope. in the season either. No, you're exactly right. It's a tough juggle for a manager, but one of the juggles that manager has is trying to get every one of his 25 into a situation where he succeeds early on. That's when you get a club that loosens up and starts to play winning baseball if they have the tools. Yeah, that's an excellent thought. Contributions came from all over for A.J. Hinch's club last year. Max Stassi, of course, will open the season on the disabled list as well. 
That's a strikeout for out number two, and Nelson has it going tonight. Yeah, we're taking a peek apparently at what Nelson did over the course of the spring, pitching in Arizona and finding a way to have a, an ERA under the two mark. Look at the numbers if you're so inclined to do so of what the major league clubs did in Arizona again this spring. It's just it's it's kind of a silly ball in terms of what they put up offensively. Castro singled and stole a base. That is a tough place to pitch. There are more parks at altitude and breaking pitches usually are not as effective in Arizona spring training. Generally ERA is much higher there than in Florida spring training. Castro looks at ball one. Cactus versus grapefruit. Apparently cactus is a much more offensive plant. <laughs> Brewers had a 5.15 ERA. In Florida and uh, Arizona rather one ball one strike. Good swing that had a chance to result in one of those balls sharply hit to left field. Mm -hmm. Well you remember the story Ash the Seattle Pilots. Became the Milwaukee Brewers. And uh, the equipment truck supposedly was on its way from Arizona spring training to Seattle. The truck driver got a. An order to stop around Salt Lake City and check in. He got a phone call to redirect him to Milwaukee for opening day. <laughs> that was a quick move. Yeah, One and two. That predated cell phones, but if it was in the cell phone era, you can bet you quickly as a driver be on the horn trying to find out was <laughs> were you being pranked. Yeah. <laughs> Ashton Kush, Kutcher on the other uh, <laughs> other end of this line. Luke Gregerson is warming up. Tony Sip is getting loose in the bullpen. A.J. Hinch has not yet named his closer. Yeah, he might not do that. But it sounds as if. He doesn't want to stick with only one plan. We'll wait and see what he says publicly. But he has some options. Well the numbers for Ken Giles this spring were not what. Was anticipated let's put it that way. Castro's down on strikes. Scoreless fifth inning for Nelson. He leads it three nothing after five. Colin McHugh back out for inning number six. And he's going to get a full workload in in terms of pitches thrown. He's going to join him in the starting five in the rotation. Dallas Keuchel, Colin McHugh, Mike Fires, Scott Feldman, and Doug Fister this year. At least to start the season. Of course, Lance McCullers, everybody hopes, will be back sometime mid third week plus of, of April. But Mike Fires slated number three, Scott Feldman, and Doug Fister to follow in one order or the other. Uh, but all guys who had their moments during the spring where they pitched well and other moments where the numbers uh, didn't favor them. Doug Fister started out I, I, I think in particular the guy who had five starts pitched very well early on but wound up uh, allowing an ERA of 827 23 hits and 16 and a third inning. So not exactly what he had hoped for. But guys who have track records. Mike Fires right there will be the starter tomorrow at 110 against Milwaukee. Matt Garza goes for the Brewers tomorrow. Mike said he feels pretty good about where he is right now with his pitching. Jake Marisnik, by the way, uh, was alongside him, I believe, on the bench. Jake 
Had a bit of a sprained ankle the other day, but he's been declared healthy again. Ryan Braun leads it off in the sixth inning. He homered last time. And there's strike one. It was one of those intriguing injuries to Jake Marisnik. He jogged off the field once he was summoned to come off. <laughs> oh, he is hurting bad, isn't he? <laughs> Gomez is in right center. Braun, by the way, last year made the move from right field to left field, and that's where he'll be this year with Santana in right. Watch how still Braun stays, and one of the reasons why he's such a good off speed hitter. This was the straight changeup, and he swung in front. Some guys will see the breaking ball so much better than the changeup. Well, Colin can fire, file that one away. You see Braun, who's done a lot of damage against Houston. Unable to make contact on that good changeup for Colin McHugh. And Julia told us earlier how much he's been working on that pitch this spring. That should be in play. Marwin Gonzalez with a sprint. George Springer coming over, and that is not in play, in fact. And players have to be careful in that area of the field. When sliding, they can wind up with an injury if they slide. Low into that area that's not padded. We've seen some tough injuries over there in that part of the ballpark. Yeah, that's that kind of Bermuda Triangle kind of area where nobody has a great shot to get there, but boy, Marwin made his best effort. Well, it is padded now, Ash. It didn't used to be padded. You think that leaves you wanting to come out tomorrow and give it a try? Uh, yes, let's let's do that about 7:30 in the morning, shall we? <laughs> Well, I have a feeling you might be here at that point, so <laughs> throw on the sliding shorts and get at it. No, pal, we've got Friday morning traffic tomorrow. Ooh, that's right. Two and two. Mm, that's going to require a calculated departure time. We may have to do the carpool thing. Mm. That will entitle us to get in one of those super fast lanes on the way in, right? Wow. So it required two or three people there now. <laughs> or can you just pay because you're willing to? You could do that. If only we could jump on the Grand Parkway and get here. Yeah. That's a speedy route around outer Houston now, that section of it just opening a few days ago. Yeah, we're just not close enough to any portion of it to, to jump right on. <laughs> three and two. Well, this will be a different feel for that first road trip going from Yankee Stadium to Miller Park in Milwaukee right back to interleague play with only second series. Correa. High throw and it bounces out of play. So Braun will now take second base in the high throw. It's a single and a throwing error on Correa, his second error of the spring. There are times when there are plays you think, yeah, it's probably not the best idea to make a throw on this really tough play. The thing is, with Perea, we've seen him make this play time and time again. Yep. So I can't say that that's a, a mistake tactically at all. Just didn't pull it off. And he would have had him had the throw been there for Marwin. He had a lot on it, but it wasn't accurate. So McHugh will leave after 79 pitches, 48 of them strikes. With a score three to nothing, Milwaukee. Luke Gregerson coming in. Back in a moment.
Team Brewers pitching change. Luke Gregerson now taking the mound. Colin McHugh's day is done. And Gregerson, one of the two names being thrown around for that closer spot, something A.J. Hinch has not named yet. Uh, and he may not name here anytime soon. Of course, a few days left before the season starts. But he did say today he's got a good number of guys in that bullpen that can pitch in high leverage innings and so he hasn't even really talked to his players yet about who would be in that role he he knows who he's going to use guys uh, he's just not ready to tell us that yet but Gregerson should pitch today as well as tomorrow if all goes well but people want to know Julia I know they do just be patient we'll okay. find out the ninth inning will come you promise all right <laughs> Luke Gregerson with only his second outing of the spring in a major league game he's pitched in a couple of minor league games Faces Jonathan Lucroy, who's two for two. So if Luke Gregerson is to be the guy that starts the year as the closer, he's got to show he can go back to back days. And Julia talked about what A.J. Hinch is planning right now. Gregerson, a brief stint tonight, maybe a little more tomorrow. And then, ideally, if he doesn't hurt anything, he's ready to, to slot right into that spot. And he may be out there for just one batter right now. Okay. Well, his first outing in a major league game was March 27th at Detroit. One inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, three strikeouts. He threw nine pitches. That's just not getting your work in. That's being lazy <laughs> about things. And the reason he's only made that one outing is that he was banged up earlier in the spring, had a strained left side. So the Astros played it the cautious way and he had to sit out for a while. That's rock to center field Gomez backing. It's over his head bounces and goes out of play. That's a double it bounced over the yellow line and an RBI for Lucroy. You know, we're watching a couple of guys on this Milwaukee Brewers club swing the bat very well here tonight. Ryan Braun he's done it in the past Jonathan Lucroy. Part of the order, guys, and they're picking them up. That looked like a slider that stayed up a little bit, oh, Ash. That it was. Of course, the slider, the key weapon for Luke Gregerson, but he hung it right through the heart of the plate. Chris Carter singled and walked. And there's ball one. Well, with Gregerson having been so successful last year, 31 saves and 36 opportunities, walking just 10 in 61 innings with 48 hits. So his walks and hits per innings pitched below one, 0 0.95 whip, a terrific year. And the radar gun doesn't tell you everything on a pitcher. I'll say this about Luke Gregerson. He is tough as nails, and he's a guy with the type of personality you want out there when everything's on the line. So he had been primarily a setup man in his career. Last year was his first year as the full time closer. That went exceptionally well. Ken Giles took over as the Phillies closer during the season last year after the Phillies traded Jonathan Papelbon to Boston and he did very well. He had been a setup man a little bit earlier in his career. So both have had experience in both roles set up and closing. Carter strikes out he was really fooled on that slider like a slower speed to the pitch. Took a bit off, didn't have it in the strike zone, but Chris Carter inclined to take a hack at that pitch. And this is the brief appearance you talked yeah. about. Yeah, I think I think the intent tonight was to get one out. He wound up facing two hitters, but right now for Luke Gregerson, this is about pitching in back-to-back -back games and feeling like everything is squared away when those two games are over. Four nothing Milwaukee back in a moment.
sixth inning with one out and a runner at second. Tony Sipp comes in. He's pitcher number three of the night, and he may be the only lefty in the Astros bullpen. We'll have to wait and see about that, Ash. Certainly a possibility. A guy who relies on his fastball, about 57 percent. Slider and changeup factor in. He'll mix in that changeup when he gets it rolling. He can throw that back to back and sometimes even more on hitters. Very effective pitch. Lefty on lefty. Sip opposing center fielder Ramon Flores, who's 0 for 2. Sip delivers ball one. Last year the fastball velocity numbers were down a bit from the previous year. But the overall success was not down. He was. In a second of two consecutive years of great success. Made 60 appearances at a 1.99 ERA. Average better than a strikeout per inning. Rocked into right field. That'll get a run home. And it's played well by Springer. It's five to nothing now. Springer limiting the damage to an RBI single for Flores. Scoring Lucroy. Yeah, one of the game's best right fielders making a nice play. But these Brewers hitters up to the task here this evening. They're banging out line drives. Lefty v lefty and uh, lefty with wood in his hands right there was. The clear winner. Now it's Aaron Hill. He's driven in two tonight with a single and a sack fly. In for a strike. Colin McHugh in five innings tonight allowed six hits, four runs, all earned. Walking one, fanning one, throwing 79 pitches. Castro's got to play at second. High throw to Altuve, not in time. Flores is able to advance on what would be probably a wild pitch, that pitch in the dirt. Not really a, a block effort there by Jason Castro, but he kept the ball in position. It's a really pass ball. I don't know, based on what I thought I saw, that. That would be accurate. It looked like it bounced, but let's see now. The umpires are going to come over and look at something. They'll put the headsets on. So we are going to spring training practice every aspect of this game we can, huh? Yeah, it's a replay challenge. Just like riding a bike, we could do this in our sleep. On the play at second, Altuve came down and put the tag on Ramos, who was popping up at second on his slide, but still pretty close. That is close. Closer than I thought watching that play initially. Yes. Looked like but Eric Cooper had the call. Kind of with you, though, I don't know that anything's going to get changed here. We still can't see the pitch what took place. I don't know. I Looked safe didn't it did to me and. Jose Altuve is not uptight about what the call is going to be. Is this just AJ deciding to. Yeah, let's test it what the heck test the mechanism. Get in midseason form, right? There you see the throw high, and ooh, it gets closer with that angle, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. This is the Brewers' angle. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, close. And Cooper, as you see, keeps moving, so he's he's on the run trying to make a call, which is tough. Oh, he might be out. That's really close. I've got to call him out with that. That little fine piece of camera work. Well, if they got a peek at that, I. 
think we could see an out called. We're about to find out what the ruling is. Out. Nerves are wearing Altuve out. AJ Hinch exercising good judgment on that replay challenge. He gets the out call at second. And Jose Altuve may have advised him to do that. We didn't see. Think he was pleading that case? Well, you can forget about the wild pitch pass ball debate. It's an out from two to four. So that's an immaterial ruling. And now two outs for Aaron Hill with a 1 1 count. Just another caught stealing, improving that yeah. throw him out ratio for the catcher. That's right. In the dirt, ball two. Isn't that amazing, though, on this replay challenge? A play like that did not even seem to either one of us to no. be close, and then he got it overturned. Yeah, I'd love to know how what word came down to AJ instantly. Oh, you got to check this one. I would guess Altuve advised him to challenge oh, it. Maybe so. But I'm guessing. Ripped on a line, left field corner. Rasmus, as the ball pops up, bare hands it and fires into second base. Right on the bag. These fellas came to town with their bats definitely ready to swing. Are we looking at Robin Yount and Cecil Cooper and Paul Molitor? You might be stretching things a bit, but okay. you never know what can happen. Yeah, they had some pretty good clubs back in those days, but Ooh. you can only find one team, the Brewers, winning their division going all the way back to I think I want to say 81 82 somewhere in that range 82 yeah they went back to back years back then and that's it back to back years and then they have one more since and it was in a, a recent season right so they've had some quiet years well big changeover as Doug Melvin moved out as general manager and he was there for years Bringing in David Stearns at the top of the chart. So now the Brewers are hoping to retool with this young talent they've acquired and they seem to have some excellent young talent including shortstop Orlando Arcia. And he's a top 10 prospect. Ranked by many of the services who might see his debut at short. In another couple of months or so. He was a double A last year. Well a guy that. I thought was going to be a really good player when he hit the big league scene. Jonathan VR may be the shortstop right now. Didn't have a good spring, but we've seen Jonathan when he gets it going. He can be a be a dynamic force. He can be. New and Heist takes it. Two balls, two strikes. The Astros were here just a couple of years ago. The patient approach. Young players need time to develop in the minor leagues. And a number of teams are there right now. The Phillies are there right now. The Atlanta Braves are in that slot. The Cincinnati Reds. San Diego Padres they are all retooling. There are more teams in the National League doing that than in the American League by far. So the American League to many who really follow all the teams in baseball looks like a tougher league and a better balanced league. Is there more retooling that goes on right now Brownie than when we were kids for example watching the game. I think so. But uh, we'd have to defer to some brighter minds perhaps on that. Of course in those days it was rebuilding. That's true. But a lot of people didn't talk about rebuilding. No. Struck him out. Well, Tony Sepp it's the final out here and it's contested by New and Heiss. But the Brewers out of their lead, which is now five to nothing.
It's been all Brewers to this point. Five nothing over the Astros as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Every Wednesday night home game is Dollar Dog Hot, hot Dog Night presented by Nolan Ryan Beef. Enjoy all the Dollar Dogs you want while cheering on the Astros. Get more info by visiting Astros.com slash Dollar Dogs or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Well the Milwaukee Brewers have been banging out line drives tonight and they have had their way with the Astros so far now the Astros try to do some damage here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Jimmy Nelson has been very effective tonight as the starter. I've seen a patient Jose Altuve scuffle a little bit this evening. Let's see if he opens it up and takes a hack early. Nope. Seems like he has a game plan tonight to take pitches. It would seem to be the case. Maybe he's setting up the scouts for the Yankees right <laughs> now. That could be it. Well, they leave him a lot of room between short and second base. No balls, two strikes to Jose. VR is well over into the hole. Do you remember many teams playing him that way against a right handed pitcher? You know, to me, he. Is more of a pull hitter than a lot of people might initially think. He can use right field, no question. But he'll hit a lot of ground balls on that left side. The question I have is even if you play him to pull in that hole, can you throw him out with his speed? He pokes it up the middle. Here's Jeanette with a play, and it's a good one. Jose Altuve gets down that first base line with some of the best in the game, especially when he's sniffing a hit. Yeah, he, he reminds people, I think, in that respect of Craig Biggio, the way he always got out of the box and ran hard to first base. Now Craig Council is out. It's been a good night for Jimmy Nelson, and that'll be the end of it. 62 pitches, 40 of them strikes for Nelson. He leaves with the score 5 0 Milwaukee. Back in a moment. Five to nothing Milwaukee leading Houston. Let's look ahead to the April schedule for the Astros. It's a difficult one that first month. First a playoff team the Yankees then Milwaukee then another playoff team that eliminated the Astros Kansas City a resurgent Detroit club another playoff team Texas and a club picked by some to win the American League East Boston. It's Texas Rangers the one team in Major League Baseball that had the Astros number last year. And they had it to a kind of a crazy tune late in the season. It all totaled up 13 Texas victories to six for Houston in the head to head series. Chris Capuano, a longtime veteran, last year with the Red Sox and Yankees, was six and three and four, rather, with 4.35 ERA, picked up as a free agent in January. And he had been with the Brewers before. Came to the big leagues back in 2003. He's won 76 major league games. He's had a couple of surgeries. 
George Springer taking ball one. Well, Capuano has battled back from those injuries, though. 2 0. It's probably the best opportunity to stay on in the major leagues. You get a little older, you're not having great success, but can you get a left handed bat out as a lefty out of the bullpen? A lot of clubs looking for that guy. He's a former starting pitcher. But a lot of guys have made that transition. Lefties who were starters and now they and Wandy's trying to do the same thing. They reinvent themselves as maybe one or two batter left handers. But in Wandy's case he could be a long man as well with the Astros. You have scuffles with the starting staff. Obviously Wandy can fill in. Springer takes a four pitch walk. And it's Carlos Correa. He's 0 for 2. Think about this. Correa is 21 years old. Think about young MVPs in the American League. Mike Trout was 23 when he won it in 2014. Cal Ripken Jr. won the MVP in the American League in 1983 at age 23. Vita Blue in 1971 was 22 years old when he won the American League MVP. Carlos doesn't turn 22 until September. Let, let's stay with the recent one there, Mike Trout. Mm -hmm. Prior to his MVP season, were people saying, kind of beating the drums, this guy might win the award this year? Because that's what's happening for Carlos Correa. Yeah, I think they were. Yeah, I think you're right. Because he had finished second, I think, that, twice yes, that's before right. he won it. So they figured eventually he would break through. And that's right. He stepped right in and was second dog in the MVP race stealing bags at a high rate and of course he's turned into one of the game's great power hitters as well. So you've got a guy at the beginning of his career Correa and Capuano trying to stretch it out a little bit longer in the late stages of his career it would appear two balls no strikes. Isn't it great to think about a brand new season about to begin though all this anticipation over the winter free agent signings and trades and various things going on then spring training has now just about played out all the way to the end and now the really exciting time comes in just a few days. You know I imagine for some fans in some cities they would uh, probably say uh, limited excitement here for right. our ball club but right. that's not the case with the Astros. This is truly a talented bunch. It hasn't been a great night to this point. But uh, yeah this this team has a chance to to really shoot for the stars. It's a nice situation for Matt Duffy. You saw him a moment ago. A September call up last year. After winning the player of the year award in the PCL. He makes an opening day roster for the first time. That's out to left field. Caught on the warning track by Braun. It sounded like a cracked bat, and it just didn't carry. Two outs. Great trajectory, but right off the end of the bat, I think. And Magic Carlos knew it right away. Watch this swing. This is what you're hoping to get, but just again off the end of the bat. You can see the reaction from Carlos. He knew right away not enough. Colby Rasmus is next. He's 0 for 2. Ripped a line drive at the second baseman in the fourth inning. In the dirt, good play by Luke Roy. He moves around well behind the plate. But, you know, we've talked about him supposedly being shopped. Sometimes players are shopped just to see what their value is. but. I would think with David Stearns there would also be that certain reluctance to trade a Jonathan Lucroy who could really be the anchor of this team. Yeah this Brewers club is not void of of some guys that can help lead. I mean, we've talked about Ryan Braun a former MVP. Jonathan Lucroy he's got good looking value behind the dish. Aaron Hill don't know if he can 
be a resurgent player this year. Numbers were down last year playing in Arizona where it should be a good hitters park. Pull foul. But yeah they're not void of some guys that can drive in runs. I would question their pitching staff right now. Santana is a guy that I think could be poised to, to really turn it on as a big league star. Well, they liked what they saw of him last year, and he's been absolutely terrific this spring. Capuano now 37 years old. He's drafted by Arizona in 99. He went to Duke. Now Colby, of course, sometimes takes a seat against left-handed pitching. The Astros have Jake Marisnik, a right-handed batter, and they can play him anywhere in the outfield if they want to give somebody else a day off. Tucker also bats left and that had something to do for A.J. Hinch with the placement of Matt Duffy on this club because of those left handed hitters we just talked about like Rasmus Tucker and then there's Valbuena as well. He wanted another right handed bat and that's Duffy on the bench. Well he is literally that piece to a puzzle. That's a high one up the right field line but foul. Home run distance for Colby. I guess that would be figuratively. I, I don't think he's going to lay down and slot into a puzzle, but you get the gist. I mean, it, it's about making your 25 man roster as workable as possible, and he's that guy that fills it out very well. Yeah. Well, this is the tough thing. His brother got it, so he's crying. And that's the story of that foul ball. It'll make you stronger in the end. Rasmus caught looking that ends the sixth inning with no runs no hits and a man left five nothing Brewers. The top of the seventh a lot of changes around the field here before I get to those single game tickets for 2016 are on sale now catch premier matchups with the Cubs Yankees Red Sox and the Rangers select games also have giveaway items like our award series bobbleheads or replica jerseys for more info visit Astros.com or call 1-877-9 Astros. One of the changes Tyler White taking over at first base who was just told this week that he would be on the club for opening day and make his major league debut this season. His parents were there uh, in town that day as Brownie was mentioning earlier. So a very special day for him. He told me today he's still floating. Feet have not touched the ground. Uh, just a very overwhelming experience for him. He worked really hard this spring. Uh, told me also, you know, he felt like he was part of this team from day one. So it, it never, he never had the pressure around him. Just felt like he fit in from the first day. And, excited to move forward with the team also guys this is his first ever trip to Minute Maid Park this is the first time he'll play first base at Minute Maid Park so he had to kind of take it in when he got here today before they had some early work as well and another thing I learned about Tyler White is he's never been able to buy his own car so that would probably be one of the first purchases that he will make 
uh, here coming up. That's exciting stuff. Thanks, Julia. We have wholesale changes now for A.J. Hinch, 5 0 Milwaukee. VR leads it off. New pitchers, Ken Giles. And Eric Kratz is the new catcher, and there's ball one. VR is 0 for 2. We have uh, changes to tell you about as we move along through this next pitch. And they are numerous. New left fielder comes over for this one. That will be out of play for Teoscar Hernandez now in left field. There's Teoscar wearing number 94. Derek Fisher's in right field. New third baseman is Colin Moran with Alex Bregman at shortstop, Danny Worth at second, and Tyler White at first, as Julia mentioned. Off speed pitch from Giles. One and one. And the Astros obtaining Giles in that deal with the Philadelphia Phillies got a power arm for the back of their bullpen in that deal. He is 25 years old from Albuquerque. Sharply hit Bregman diving off his glove and on through into center field for a single for VR who takes the big turn and gets back. That's a great effort by Bregman. One of the questions I think that is still to be answered about Alex Bregman is what kind of range does he have as a shortstop. I think some people believe he's going to hit he had a bit of a scuffle this spring trying to swing the bat against major league pitching. You can see that all out effort. Giles in eight games this spring is 0 and 2 with a 7.56 ERA. Big time stuff as he approaches 100 miles an hour. That's his nickname at 95 there 100 miles Giles. Strike to Santana who's 0 for 3. Way off his game at 95. <laughs> Last year he had 87 strikeouts and 70 innings for the Phillies. 15 for 20 in saves he had 12 holds. One ball one strike well we've seen the Kansas City bullpen. And others in recent years just locked down games after the sixth inning with not only the closer but hard throwing setup guys as well Ash. And it was one of the big strengths for the Astros last year. They didn't have a, a lot in terms of outside of Josh Fields maybe the guy that will just go out there and strike out two or three hitters in an inning. But they had great success. Yes they did. And it continued throughout the year. The Astros bullpen ranking fourth last year in terms of bullpen ERA 3.27. More of a pitch to contact type of bullpen. Will Harris had a good year. And Tony Sip, we can go on and on for a while. The nice thing about this year's bullpen is that Pat Neshek is healthy again after surgery on his foot. Said his velocity is up this year, too. Okay. Now, I don't know how much velocity plays in for a sidearm submarining type guy although when you actually see a slow motion of where he delivers from it it probably isn't in that submarine range but numbers are up struck him out looking to right for me Will Harris was a guy that locked it down just as steady as anybody last year he was sensational Giles is slider is very effective. He's not just a hard thrower with the fastball. Scooter Jeanette is 0 for 3. Five runs on 10 hits for Milwaukee, no runs on two hits for Houston. Giles fires over to first. Tyler White has been working hard to learn that first base position. He had been primarily a third baseman in the past. Bounce foul. Yeah, it will be intriguing to see how Tyler White is able to take advantage of opportunities when he does play at first base. 
I think a lot of that is going to come down how he takes advantage of individual at bats. If he's the DH on a given day, if he comes in as a pinch hitter, again, that occasional start at first base or whatever it turns into, but his bat could tell the big story. Snap throw to first. VR was taking liberties with that lead. <laughs> Told you he was going to throw down here. Let yeah. me know. He's giving his first base coach a rough time. Joking with him. <laughs> VR loves to take some liberties though. We've seen him try to steal many times as an Astro. He's going. From his knees, Kratz with a one hop throw. They get him. What a tag by Bregman. I don't know if that's a typical style by Kratz to throw from the knees like that. Looks like Craig Council is going to ask for the review. Everybody getting in some practice tonight. Just drop to the knee and let it go. But you're right, Bregman, that glove comes up, but very little before applying the tag. Did he? And I think he. I think we might see a second reversal on the night. I believe we're going to. Yes. Noticed a tendency this spring on those plays where the runner kind of goes by the, the infielder trying to apply the tag, where in the past almost always that guy would be called safe. This spring, maybe because of what re review plays have shown in the last couple of years. It's starting to go the other way. Umpires are starting to call that play out. And in this case, mistakenly so. Close. Looks like VR had made it to the base before the tag. Um, maybe both managers one for one on their nights. Colin Moran and VR talk it over. Enos Cabell glowing in his remarks before the game about Colin Moran and his hitting. He's I was just going to drive machine. I was Ash. just about to mention Colin Moran. He's impressed a lot of people this spring. Had a little bit of a slow start first half last year in the minor leagues came on like gangbusters and hit 300 but. I think more minds right now are focused on what was seen on spring training. Looks like he could swing it. From that left side against righties and lefties. He's 15 for 40, a 375 average. Three homers, nine runs batted in for Colin Moran this spring. He just has that great bat plane, the left handed swing. He makes contact at a high rate. Safe is the call. So the call overturned at second. VR will get a stolen base. So the umpires are getting their work in and realizing they need a little extra batting practice. Bregman the shortstop applied the tag quickly got the call but it was reversed. Now it's a 2 1 count on Scooter Jeanette. In for a strike, and it's two and two. Ken Giles had some time with the Phillies. In fact, 44 games back in 2014. Last year got a full season for the first time in the big league. So he's beginning a period of five more years now under club control before he could become a free agent. And that was a major factor in the Astros' willingness to give up. Red Oberholzer, Vince Velasquez, who is the Phillies' number five starter, Thomas Eshelman, and Mark Appel in that trade. The Phillies doing the same thing Milwaukee is doing, stocking up on young players. Yeah, I think, you know, we were talking about this earlier, Ash, about whether that sort of thing happened, you know, 25, 30 years ago. I think it's different now because of the budgets that teams have and how high the payrolls have gone that teams are less willing to try to compete uh, with a higher payroll if they don't think they can 
get to the playoffs. Does that seem right to you? I think in a way you know right now what, what's being discussed and this was a case for the Astros the last few years. All right. If we finish third with a much higher payroll 40 50 million dollars higher than now what have we really accomplished finishing third we're not in the playoffs. So I think right in the sense of of competing you weigh that against hey we want to we want to get back to the playoffs we want to have a run of several years in the playoffs so we're willing to take the lower payroll take the hit restructure gather prospects and let them progress together that's the decisions that have been made. This has long been my opinion as we watch strike three called outside edge. Is that there should be a, a calorie a salary cap salary floor right that's Bring been discussed. all 30 teams into the game. Either you play within the rules of trying to compete and win or get out right and and that's honestly how I feel. Okay. And I'm really surprised that the Players Association has been unwilling if that's been brought up and I assume it has been. Yeah. That they've been unwilling to maybe see less of that 20 plus million dollar player but more of the guy from the bottom end that brings the numbers up. Right. Fastball foul back by Braun one and one. Well my guess is without really knowing that the Players Association would embrace the salary floor but not the cap. <laughs> yeah. Well I, you know as in most negotiations give and take would seem to apply. Yeah. But I would love to see 30 clubs that are saying we want to win it and that means this year. Well and then what happens as you've seen with the Astros is teams sometimes arrive a little ahead of schedule <laughs> yeah. with a low payroll and they compete very well and make the playoffs. Yeah that's certainly true. As if anything can be scheduled right involving competitive young human beings. Yeah how do you do it. <laughs> two balls two strikes. I wonder did people think. A couple of years back at this time. That the Kansas City Royals were going to go on and play in a couple of World Series. No, I, I don't think too many would have. No. It's a fair question. You know, when you look at a team like Milwaukee, all right, you've got a, a high salary player in Braun. Uh, why not just go all the way? Some people would ask. Trade him. Get all young. And have a lower payroll. Well, I think that's part of, you know, as the conversation goes on. Having some uh, some moments here for the Astros but. And that could be called a pass ball I would think. Yeah. But I. So much going on now I'm trying to. Get back to my train of thought on that one. Well if you trade Braun. Oh yes. Uh, he would certainly be an attractive commodity on the market for a contending club with the ability to withstand that payroll. Right? Without a doubt and you were talking earlier in the game about Jonathan Lucroy the catcher. And the fact that there has been some apparent shopping going on or at least inquiries about him and uh, he's in that same boat guy that could help other clubs but likely is only going to make this a club that competes on a given night true. And for all we know Braun may have no trade provisions in his contract he has businesses in Wisconsin perhaps he doesn't want to leave we don't know. But he has proven himself a big time player. Mm. Tremendous bat speed. One hopper to second worth has it and on over to first. So the Brewers do not come through with a run in the seventh inning. They get a hit they leave a man at third. It's five nothing.
strong right here as these Astros fans are hoping for some runs. It's five nothing Brewers at seventh inning stretch time. Milwaukee will go with pitcher number three of the night right hander Tyler Cravey. So far it's been Nelson five and a third innings two hits no runs one walk five strikeouts Capuano two thirds of an inning but no hits no runs one walk one strikeout now Cravey for Cravey seven starts last year and they didn't uh, turn out all that well for him you can see the ERA of 570 kind of basic standard stuff around the big leagues fastball at about 90 almost 91 miles an hour he's got the change slider curveball two seamer on occasions he'll cut it so he's trying to come up with all the tricks that the other guys try. He went to Napa Valley College Ash. It's not one of the hotbeds for producing a whole lot of players is it probably produce a lot of grapes but not yeah. sure about players. Yeah that could uh, kind of refocus some of the, the would be players in that area. Tyler is 26 years old 17th round pick in 09. Martinez California are you familiar with that no okay. not at all I'm not either I know where Castro California is yeah they produce fine catchers named Castro they do <laughs> former Brewer Carlos Gomez comes up here with the Astros looking for some runs in the bottom of the seventh inning he's 0 for 2 oh that's a big cut <laughs> strike one <laughs> Colin Moran is on deck. I'm kind of curious about your impressions of Colin Moran in terms of stature. He's a stronger, sturdier based guy than than I had the impression of uh, a couple of years ago when he first came over. I believe he has done some upper body work. You know, people need to go to the body shop every now and then. You know that's true. But uh, we'll have to ask him. I have not asked, but he looks a little yeah. bit thicker to me. He struck me as that kind of thin guy, lean third yes. baseman. But yes, he's a, he's a little bigger guy than that. Well, it's going to be fun to watch him hit. Well, he may not be far from starting to spend a lot of time in the major leagues. True. Gomez strikes out. And that's out number one. So we'll look at Moran. We were mentioning his numbers a few minutes ago, and they are rather eye popping for spring training 2016 for Colin. Okay, Brownie, you asked about Napa College, you shall receive. All right. I think they began in 1942. They had 16 students in their first class. Ooh. None of whom played in the major leagues, I would safely wager. They were probably all making wine. Ooh, that's strike one. Gravy at 92 upstairs. Well, Colin Moran, a couple of years back, was not a big home run guy. But we saw him hit one opposite field just recently, a couple of days ago, left field and. Uh, He's starting to look more and more like a guy who can drive the baseball. I don't know that he's as good defensively at third base as Valbuena at this stage of things. I would agree that he is not from what we've seen. A little bit of that give and take though. You're always looking for a guy that's producing on the high end on the corners of the infield. Moran was the sixth player drafted in the 2013 draft. Miami took him. And he came to Houston in that trade in midseason 2014. Jared Cozart, Kike Hernandez going to Miami. And of course, Jake Marisnik was another part of that trade. And then Francis Martez. So the Astros, they are very high on Martez. They're really looking forward to the future after that trade. As you know, it's been a decision for them which prospects to keep and which ones to deal. They can't protect everybody. There's a 40 man roster. And after players have come into the system uh, into pro ball for either four or five years, depending on when they sign, 
they either have to be protected on that 40 man roster or they can be exposed to another team taking them in the rule five draft so the teams just can't keep everybody and that's why they sometimes trade prospects because they would lose them anyway. Well your comments are kind of thought provoking for me because I, I think of. Deals made this past year Brett Phillips who winds up in a Brewers uniform. I know was not a guy that the Astros thought OK it's time to deal him. True. You you acquiesce to getting what you're trying to get when that other team wants your best prospects. Yes. Moran takes strike three. Now Preston Tucker will bat. Well it's the old spring training jinx Ash. We talk about how a guy has been hitting as well as anybody we've seen all spring and then he takes strike three. So now I've gotten a little further info on Napa <laughs> College. Okay. Apparently they have a what is it a list of, of distinguished alumni. There you go. OK. And there are only seven on that list. Seven. But Mr. Cravey is one of those seven. OK. He's shaking his head as if to say no I'm one of <laughs> no. six. <laughs> That's a rip into right center field. Tucker is going to go around first into second and the throw is pulling off the shortstop from the base. It's a double by Tucker. Good swing. And as it turns out good base running I'm not sure had that throw been on the money that it was a wise choice but. Taking a chance and making it work. Perfectly placed in the gap. It was. Hit number three for the Astros. Tyler White, 348, two homers, 10 runs batted in. Gaudy numbers. Take strike one. So he takes a strike, but that's his style. This yes. is a guy, unlike Altuve, who has grown up doing this. He works counts, he draws a lot of walks, doesn't hit a ton of home runs yet. Though he looks like he could. He's a fire plug. One and one. 26 years old, 33rd round choice in the 2013 draft from Mooresboro, uh, Mooresboro, North Carolina, and Western Carolina University. Inside out swing, a little jam shot in the right, in for a hit. That'll drive in Tucker to make it 5 1. Tyler White keeps hitting. You know what hitters do? Hitters hit. And that was a total jam shot flare, but you know, I think about some of the guys that drove in a ton of runs that I played against that got so many jam shot, little bleeder type hits, but hitters hit. For somebody who's hitting about 210, this ball drops foul. <laughs> or they're playing you there. I don't know. The story to be continued. He continues a hot spring. Eric Kratz is up for the first time. He just joined the Astros after the trade from the Padres. And there's strike one to Kratz. Kratz, a veteran. Backup catcher joining the Astros to help get things started. 220 career hitter in six seasons. He's moved around in the majors from team to team. He was not on the 40 man roster of the Padres. He was traded for Dan Straley. Straley was out of options. So you get to this point of spring training if you're the Astros and determine well, if Straley won't make our staff. We can't send him down. Let's see what we can get. I'm talking to Steve Sparks, who, former pitcher himself, really watches the pitchers with a keen eye. And he was high on what Dan Straley was doing this spring. Kratz puts it in the air. And near the right field line, it's caught for out number three. One run scoring on two hits and a man left. Alex Presley with that play. It's 5 to 1 Brewers.
Clippers lead the Astros. And Matt Duffy finding out that he makes the team. A.J. Hinch says he's going with 12 pitchers. So they're down to one decision, one tough decision that this team has to make. It's between these guys in the bullpen. Wandy Rodriguez, the veteran. James Hoyt, who had a great spring. You see the numbers up there. Uh, really impressed the guys with his uh, two-strike off-speed stuff. And then Michael Feliz, the guy's had a little bit of time. Uh, he was optioned recently, but he is back in the mix for that last spot in the Astros bullpen. Uh, they need long relief as well, guys, but this could get interesting. Of course, uh, we'll probably see Wandy Rodriguez. Either, if we don't see him tonight, I would guess we'd see him tomorrow. I know that's somebody that AJ wanted to see one last time, but that's tough competition right there. Not an easy decision to make for the skipper, guys. No, and these are difficult times, you know, when managers have to tell players here at the end of spring training they haven't made the team. They're going to the minor leagues. It's a crushing blow for players. So it does uh, prove to be that kind of situation for managers that they really do not look forward to at all. As we see Pat Nishek come on, and Pat had a heck of a year last year. He had a good spring for that matter leading into tonight's game, but last year pitching in 66 games for the Astros. ERA near the three and a half mark and really solidly locked things down for a good part of the year. He check delivers and there's strike one. You know, but back to the guys that Julia was talking about trying to make the back end of this pitching staff. What do spring training numbers mean? Do you look at the numbers? Michael Feliz had the best of the numbers of those three guys, but he pitched in five games. How much are you going to believe from that? So I think you have to utilize your eye and needs of the club and a whole lot going on. But a healthy Pat Neshek hopes to be able to repeat what he did last year, maybe beat it. Strikes out Jacob Nottingham, former Astros farmhand. We're out number one. Yeah, there's your guys. And yeah, Wandy was fine. 2 0 with a 395. For that matter, James Hoyt was fine. And most of the damage done against him in his last outing just a day or two ago. But yeah, I think you need more than those numbers to determine who makes this club. Chris Carter looks at ball one. That pitch missed, huh? Well, it looked good, didn't it? And Nishek was pitching in pain a lot of last season. He knew he had a foot problem from spring training on. Decided to try to tough it out and and he did that but by the end of the year that foot was really bothering him and then a piece of bone was removed after the season and he said that wasn't done until November. Yeah he won me over long before what I saw come out of his foot but that makes you realize this guy's for real he he uh, gutted it out probably harder than a lot of guys would be willing to. Two balls and a strike. So as good as the Astros bullpen was, if Nishek had been at his top form and he had a 1.87 ERA with St. Louis in 2014, it could have been even better. That's clocked into left field. And Chris Carter really got the bat around on that one. The second hit of the night for Carter. He's on for the third time. When that guy makes some serious contact, it doesn't take the ball long to get to the outfield. And that ball was flat scorched. Matt Duffy was a little intriguing as he <laughs> played this ball into a single, so he, he got the job done. But it looked like he, he decided the better option was to just let it roll by him, come off the wall, and provide yeah. some momentum to second base. We haven't seen him in the outfield, no, have we? That's a new look for me. He's been a third baseman and first baseman, but he's in left field. Ramon Flores, the batter. And it's ball one. And Brett Phillips on deck. It's going to be interesting. There's Duffy moving over toward the line. Well, it's an opportunity for A.J. Hinch and his staff to see Duffy in left field in this ballpark. He probably would not play the outfield in another ballpark but with the short dimensions in left he's not going to be asked to cover a ton of territory just to see if that might play sometime in a ball game. Yeah you have to find out if, if a guy's going to be a utility type player for you where you can utilize him. 
early on in the spring I watched some drills not game time stuff with Matt Duffy and I was thoroughly impressed at both third base and first base. He got into games and matched what he did. He played very well defensively. Laura swings and it's two and two. But now left field is another animal and see how it all works out. He's got to be better than the legendary Smeed Jolly in left field. You would think. How did Smeed become legendary? He was a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> there was a story about him playing in uh, Fenway with the short porch out there and as you know the green monster so the batter hit a ball and it went through his legs. He turned around and it was a carom shot off the green monster coming back at him now he's got the, the, his back to the infield it goes through his legs again. How many errors did he get on that play. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Might have been four. What's what's the limitation <laughs> for errors on one play? <laughs> I would imagine one per base, right? <laughs> yeah. Three balls, two strikes. Uh, we've seen guys get two errors on a play. Have you ever seen anybody or heard of a story where a guy got three errors on one play? Uh, yeah, and I don't remember who it was, but it did happen. Uh, I'd say within the last ten years. Really? Maybe. Yeah, it was. It was really crazy though. There's a ground ball hit into right field. Flores with Carter going first to third. Brings up Phillips now. You are a font of knowledge, but that what surprises me. Well, we'll have to try to find that. That may be a search that takes us a few days. <laughs> <laughs> See if Gene Diaz <laughs> happens to be listening in right now. Well, we're counting on you, Gene. <laughs> yeah. A.J. Hinch is coming out to make a move here. Brett Phillips has been announced and could be lefty on lefty. We'll look and see if maybe Wandy Rodriguez is coming out of that bullpen. We'll get that information to you with the score five to one Milwaukee right after this. Exciting news for you. Michael Feliz, by the way, has come out of the Astros bullpen to pitch, and we'll see if he provides some flame throwing. He usually does. In five games, a 1 0 record of 1.29 ERA, got in uh, to a few games last season with the Astros in September. We've been looking up some stats on the legendary Smeed Jolly and his. Defensive war rating was. Is, is this the good news you were talking about? Yeah, it's exciting news. Oh, exciting news. Smeet Jolly had a defensive war of minus 0.2. Yeah, but I'm told he was more of an offensively <laughs> well, oriented player. You're right. <laughs> Poor guy. Now, Brett Phillips, one of the Astros' top farm hands, 21 years old. Second game this spring 0 for 3 he's been out with an injury just returned. 
He hit 295 in four minor league seasons for Houston. Five tool player. Looking at strike one. The fastball looked better than 91. It did look good. 93 and a half ish last okay. year was the average for Feliz. By the way, if you're listening in and you haven't seen it yet, Brett Phillips, check it out on, on YouTube. Laughing, say maybe Brett Phillips laughing. You, I, I dare you not to laugh when you're done with watching that piece of video. It's a good one. Well, the big trade last July brought Carlos Gomez and Mike Fires to Houston for Brett Phillips, Josh Hader, Adrian Hauser, and Domingo Santana. Phillips was drafted in the sixth round by the Astros in 2012. He's an exciting young player. Big part of Milwaukee's future now. Mm. But Feliz blows one by him upstairs for a strikeout. That was intended and for a good reason. That fastball just blew by. As the guys way back used to say, Linda Ronstadt heater blew by you. Well, we were talking earlier about the possibility of Wandy Rodriguez being a long man, and Michael Feliz also would qualify for that role. Been working more on his off speed stuff this spring. The fastball certainly is not a problem for him. New and Heights takes ball one. So Feliz could be that final pitcher on the 12 man staff. He's one of three possibilities at this point. This would seem to be a final audition for him for that decision. And he throws the off speed pitch, gets a foul ball. For one ball, one strike count. Not hurting his cause right now. He looks good. He is one of the top young arms in the Astros system. Question being, is the organization better served to have him pitching every fifth day at AAA or helping the big league club? And as an organization gets better, those decisions get tougher at the end of spring training, don't they? Ash? Absolutely. And when you get to the point, and again, this is me speaking, but you get to the point where the Astros are right now. If a guy is ready to help you and can help you at the big league level, I think it's time. Of course, to make that determination is a tough one. It is a tough one. Two and one. Will he get enough work if he's yep. in the back of a big league bullpen? On the other hand, if the starter were struggling and you brought him in in the fourth inning with the bases loaded, with the firepower that he has, he could get out of that jam and stay in and last a few innings, maybe give the club a chance to win yeah, that game. That, that's all valid. Gene Diaz <laughs> apparently is listening in. Uh oh. He says, Gene tells us, that Tommy John. Made three errors on one play. Okay. July 27th of 1988 versus these very Milwaukee Brewers at Yankee Stadium and then won the game <laughs> just to rub it in. <laughs> 16 to 3 was the final, so three errors really did not hurt his cause. That's beautiful. There's a strikeout, and well, he might be on that opening day Houston staff. It's 5 to 1 Brewers. Michael Feliz strikes out two.
it's 5-1 Brewers leading the Astros as we take a look back at the career of Speed Jolly, thanks to the boys in the booth. We've been doing some serious research on this guy and his fielding percentage lifetime. How about this? First of all, he had five errors in 21 games in the outfield. Lifetime fielding percentage in left, 946%. 940 and right. There he is. Smeed. It's not, it's not good, guys. He's a handsome looking guy, though, Julia. <laughs> Give him a break, will you? Well, Whoa. how about this now? Yeah. You know, this was all about the first press conference of the year. AJ was at it with all the reporters hanging around. But look at that young femme fatale. Oh, yeah. Eyes right into the camera. She knows when there's a camera That's around, right. believe me. Straight out of Hollywood. Popped up on the infield. Five to one Brewers, and there's a one pitch out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. So it was 1931, five errors in 21 games for Smeed Jolly, but he could hit. He was all about swinging the bat. Give the guy a break. Tyler Thornburg on the mound. He got a one pitch out. So he was not the guy known as death to all things flying, huh? No, that was Bob Ferguson. <laughs> I know you and J.D. used to have a big thing about that one. <laughs> There's strike one to Derek Fisher. Who's the last player who had one of those creative kind of nicknames, death to all things flying? Uh, boy, none like that, right? I can't think of one. Eric Fisher's somebody to watch. A 300 average this spring. One homer, three runs batted in. One of the extra players who's been brought from minor league camp for this series. Thornburg has a one ball, two strike count. It's been fun to watch these top Astros prospects in addition to the guys getting ready for the major league season. Mm. That's a tough pitch. That was foul right there. Yeah. Looked like a, a splitter or a palm ball that turns into a splitter looking pitch and that'll mess up the best of hitters. Alex Bregman will be the next batter. Alex up for the first time. LSU product. Uh, the Astros took him with the second overall pick last spring. And he's hit a homer, driven in three this spring. We haven't uh, been told the various minor league club assignments for the players, but it had been speculated that Bregman might start at Double A Corpus Christi. I'm sure they know now, so maybe I'll ask him tomorrow. No balls, two strikes. This Thornburg fella is. Pretty tough looking 95 on the previous fastball drops it off to 85 on the splitter and. That's not fun. It's no day at the beach right back to 95 trying to paint outside edge. One yeah that's what you, you learn about coming to the big leagues and trying to hit is that there's a bunch of these guys that can make life tough. Upstairs for a ball. So Tommy John made three errors in one play. July 27th 1988 against Milwaukee as you said we're wondering what the three errors could have been and I know I've seen the play Ash yeah I can't remember exactly but it was something like the hitter dribbles a ground ball he drops it for one error and then he throws it into the outfield for a second error and then I believe for some reason he got involved in cutting off a throw to the plate and relayed it over the catcher's head for a third error something it, like that. It's about the only way you can come up with three errors on one play. I, I've seen some times when I thought scores just got mean. The guy bobbles a ball and then picked it up and threw and would have gotten the guy but. Threw it away. Yeah. And then the scores decide well you deserve an error on the bobble and the throw and then so that's how you get two. <laughs> we'll check it out further as the eighth inning ends. With the score, Milwaukee 5, Houston 1.
those uniform numbers up there. And it's nice to be back at Minute Maid Park. The home opener is officially sold out April 11th against Kansas City. Michael Feliz struck out two in a row to end the Brewers eighth inning. Now back out for the ninth inning throwing ball one. So it's a big night for Feliz maybe on his way to making this club facing Yadiel Rivera. Two balls no strikes. Well, we got the video of that three error game by Tommy John. That's a beauty. We'll show it to you tomorrow. Did TJ send that to you personally? No, actually, Jenny Murphy sent it and also <laughs> Gene Dias. So we appreciate that. It's on YouTube, of course. Gene just came through in a big fashion. It's amazing that he won that game. 16 to 3. What would be the expectation if somebody told you a pitcher made three errors and won the game? Colin Moran takes care of out number one. Yeah, I think that's something actually really to watch. Colin Moran defensively at third base. How good is he? Because all the reports right now are coming in. Young man can swing the stick. Yes. Former Astro Alex Presley's the batter. 293 and a good spring for Alex with three homers, 11 runs batted in. You know, he was one of those guys that just didn't have a spot to make it with the Astros but I thought at times he played very well at strike one so to describe the Tommy John play John first bobbled a swinging bunt for one error threw wildly to first for a second error and then the throw came in from Dave Winfield in right field and John cut it off and threw it past the catcher Thurman Munson trying to get a runner at home plate for the third error but not to worry he won the game. <laughs> it's not oh, amazing. you know, when video replay became a part of this game, it just destroyed things, didn't it? <laughs> Can't even retire, go home, and relax anymore. <laughs> Off-speed pitch, hammer deep to left field. That bangs off the base of the wall. Well played by Duffy into second, and that is quite a throw. Not in time to get him, but. Duffy did everything he could humanly do. You know what? That was slick. And a bit like some of the stuff I saw playing at third base in particular, where he just looked as slick as could be. Watch as he takes this ball off the wall. Like an infielder, quickly gets rid of it, not over the top so much as just a quick release and on the money. Even barehanded that wall coming out, that ball rather. That is very well played. Now Colin Walsh Ooh. with a big cut. There's strike one. Nice changeup. Well, give Feliz credit here. He's trying to make a club, and yet he's throwing that changeup liberally, not trying to just blow it by all the hitters. That's lashed into right field. And here's a throw to the plate, but it's cut off now as run number six scores. Six to one Milwaukee on Walsh's RBI single scoring Presley. And this RBI single coming on another changeup, one, however, that was left up. So location makes a big difference on that pitch. That's hit number 14 for the Brewers. The Astros have only four hits tonight. Keon Broxton the batter a 244 hitter this spring with three runs batted in. I understand J.D. Martinez hit three homers tonight for Detroit or today whenever the game was. Strike to Broxton. That Detroit club could be much improved. There's no way that I can look at the Detroit the Detroit Tigers and say they're a fifth place club as they wound up last year. No. Oh and two Brad Osmus was telling us a couple of weeks ago in spring training that his club was healthy at that point. We don't know of any substantial injuries since then. Of course the health of Justin Verlander will be a key. 
don't know what he's done here in the last week or so the last couple of weeks maybe but he had a great start to his spring. Jordan Zimmerman should help them. Of course Cabrera's got to be healthy he struck him out looking two outs. If they're to do much. Victor Martinez but they have some firepower. Well spotted this little tail running it back to the plate. It's an important time for the catcher too, Eric Kratz to yep. catch some of these pitchers before it counts. Little bit of a shaky inning with Ken Giles but when a guy who throws really hard is is not focused on the strike zone it can be a very tough life for a catcher. Now Nottingham. Ball one and as a young catcher in the Astros system he had certainly attracted attention he was involved in the trade with Oakland. And then went on in another deal to Milwaukee the Chris Davis trade. Very highly regarded. This is a guy Brownie that I heard somebody. In the know saying watch for this guy to become a big piece of that trade. One and one. Michael Feliz is 22 years old. He's from the Dominican Republic. The Astros signed him as a free agent in 2010. And on some of the scouting reports, he is described as somebody who could be a high leverage reliever. And he goes back to the off speed pitch and gets a swing for strike two. Off speed not in a good location but sometimes that hanger produces inept swings. Yeah. Feliz is certainly somebody to watch whether he's there in New York opening day or not. He can be a factor this year. Two balls two strikes. And by now A.J. Hinch having gone through his second spring training as skipper of the Astros has a Really good fix on all the players who could help his club in the next couple of years and even beyond that if they haven't been here already. A strikeout for Feliz, and he got four of those in an inning and two thirds, allowing one run on two hits with a man left in the ninth inning. It's six to one, Brewers. And there's a Crush City shirt there as Astros fans watch their club come up here in the bottom of the ninth hoping to do some crushing. Because this Milwaukee pitching staff has done a number on them so far tonight. Corey Knabel is warming up for the bottom of the ninth. He will be pitcher number five for Craig Council. Yeah we've got a nice display of orange going on right there. Corey Knable, 24 years old, is from Denton, Texas. He lives in uh, Liberty Hill, Texas, which is where Trey Hillman lives. Another guy coming out of that bullpen for the Brewers that can bring a little lightning. 
almost 95 miles an hour average on his heater. Former district MVP in Bastrop and he pitched at the University of Texas. Went to Georgetown High School as well as Bastrop High School. He came in a trade the Giovanni Gallardo deal from Texas. But he had begun his career with Detroit. Last year he pitched 48 times for Milwaukee with no wins or losses and the RA 3.22. Good strikeout numbers. He struck out 58 in 50 innings last season. And he can be a factor in the late innings in this Milwaukee bullpen. Teoscar Hernandez leads it off for Houston. He looks at ball one. The Astros have had a pretty good look at Teoscar Hernandez this spring. He's had 15 at bats with four hits, including a homer. He's driven in three. Good outfielder. Fastball is a crisp one. And it's one and one for Corey Knable. It's been Nelson, Capuano, Cravey, Thornburg, and now Knable trying to close it out. Foul straight back. Yeah, these last two guys have really lit up the radar gun and impressive in terms of just watching their stuff. He got a strikeout. One down in the ninth. Oh, we were talking about Justin Verlander a moment ago. There's a story at MLB.com tonight. He gave up a homer to his brother. His brother Ben took him deep in a minor league game. That's one that wouldn't hurt so much. No. <laughs> Matt Duffy's the batter. He looks at ball one. He had an outstanding year last year, recognized as such by the voters in the Pacific Coast League most outstanding player balloting. And then he came up to the Astros and had some very good at bats in September. One ball, one strike to Duffy. He's a guy that strikes me as not being scared to play this game. Plays it nice and loose and easy. He fouls that one well. He's been a grinder throughout his career. He's worked hard. He's 26 years old and nothing's been given to him. Well, he's now 27, in fact. He's from Boston and was a 20th round draft choice in 2011. Struck him out. Two down. Colin Moran will be the batter. He struck out back in the seventh inning. You know, quite often we read about prospects and we're reading about first, second, fifth round draft choices, but there you have Duffy, who was so outstanding last year at Fresno, 20th round pick. White, who's made the Astros opening day roster a 33rd round choice. And that's good scouting. Chop to third to end it. And Milwaukee takes it six to one in the opener of this brief two game series. Though the Brewers, with outstanding pitch, pitching tonight, have held the Astros to just four hits. They bang out 14, and they win it. Final score Milwaukee six and Houston one. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon. It's exhibition game number two against the Milwaukee Brewers. Coverage starts with a pregame show at 12 30. For Alan Ashby and Julia Morales, Bill Brown inviting you to stay tuned for the postgame show. It's coming your way next.